Hello, I'm Nubus, this is ESA Winter, you're about to watch Dark Souls 2 All Bosses by Distortion 2, and I'll be doing co-commentary. Alright, here we go. Dark yes. Souls 2. Best character name. Sorry it took so long, we still had to update the ping search. Oh, wait. Almost ready. One <laughs> quick sec. Bait him. It's got to turn on my legitimate jumping. <laughs> don't worry, this is allowed. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. You guys don't see anything. All right. Oh, you want to pop out the chat for me on that other monitor? Yeah, I'll, I will screen? after I figure out. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, might as well get started. So this is Dark Souls 2 All Bosses. Here we go. This is my boy, Distortion 2. Did I press it? Um, there we yeah, go. Okay. There we go. And I'm Nubis. This is Firepole. Got them joining me here. All right. Well, let's get started. So we're just going to be running to things betwixt. Running to the hut here and doing character creation. So Dark Souls 2 is kind of unique in that... This is the only game where the character creation is done after you gain control of your character. Um, all the other games, you just start with creating a character. So unfortunately, in the speedrun, you don't really have time to, uh, to change your character model. So we've got... Uh, how do I do this? Oh. Um. Okay, nice. <laughs> That's fine. All right, nice character name. <laughs> So we are going to be starting as Explorer and starting with Healing Wares, changing to female for the hell of it. All right. Those are the DLC keys that you get at the start of the game. In uh, Scholar, you have to collect those throughout the world, which is really annoying. Yeah, in Scholar, you lose quite a bit of time having to collect all those keys. <coughs> that's why we don't run it. Yeah, that's why <laughs> no one runs Scholar. Well, that's not there, the there's only reason. Yeah. <laughs> there's many reasons yeah. for that. There's many reasons, uh, but that is one of the main reasons. Yeah. You can't say otherwise preparing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so one thing I should mention, uh, stamina management is important in this game. In the top, below the stamina bar, you're going to see a running man icon. This is the auto run. Um, this just allows me to do menuing while sprinting in this game, which is super useful. If you, if you didn't have that, menuing would be quite a pain. Some upcoming next is the hardest boss in the game. Right, yeah. So we're going to start off by bullying this guy named Malin. He's got some really good clothes, so we're going to take those from him. Also kill him. Yeah. Yep. Rip. He's a dick, so it's okay. F yeah. for Malin. Yeah. He was a good hand. <laughs> he was a good merchant. Sadly, he's <laughs> over now. Pretty much every single run in this game, you just kill you kill Malin. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Not the only run, <laughs> yeah. So the the run we're gonna be doing after this, Malin does get spared, thankfully. There's not enough time to kill him. Yeah. Again. Well, but you can donate fifty dollars to <laughs> killing him. Sure. <laughs> sure. That should have been an incentive. We'll put that up. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna be going to the forest of fallen giants. Um, we're gonna be going towards the first boss, the last giant. I mean, he's not the first boss necessarily. If you, you go, go RBO, he's the last boss yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> you can go a bunch of different directions at the start of the run, but this is the most optimal for the all bosses around. We're just gonna be doing some menuing, throwing away some stuff, and ordering the gear. So we're gonna be swapping the gear on and off constantly throughout the run. Uh, that armor that we picked up from Malin gives about 25% extra souls, something like that. Can't remember the exact amount. It's like. 26 point something, I yeah. think. Yeah, and you get a big bonus for having the full set equipped as well. <coughs> the so great feature of this game is also, unlike in uh, Dark Souls 1, where if you interact with a fog gate, you instantly gain iframes <laughs> and you can't be interrupted. <laughs> in this game, you have this great animation where you like raise up your hand like, oh, and during the whole thing, you can be hit and then you won't go through the fog gate. Right. There is one thing we can do to make it a little bit better. If we, so you're going to see that we're two-handing our, our hands together. We're kind of holding them together. And that actually speeds up these animations a little bit on the fog gates. It, it speeds up all animate. well, not all animations, but like interacting animations. So whenever I'm opening a door or going through a fog gate, you're going to see me uh, holding my hand like this. 
So I'm kind of scared about this ladder. There's like a slightly safer strat here we can do. Okay, that should be fine. Nice oh. firebomb. Almost got me with the firebomb. All right, so we're going to be doing the one glitch in the entire... Well, actually, that's not true. There's two glitches in the entire run. Um, I'll fix that in the other run, though. <laughs> yeah, at least on current patch. So we're going to be doing using these firebombs here to blow up this wall. All right, got it first try. That's good. But what happens there is there's a stack of exploding barrels on the other side of the wall, and if you throw the firebomb just right at the wall, it will go through the wall and explode the barrels and thus explode the wall. It saves you quite a bit of time, actually, for such a small thing. This this uh, pocket can be really scary. Yeah, if you sta if you manage your stamina right, it's yeah. it's pretty consistent, but you can still get trolled from time to time. Almost at the first boss here, last giant. Just down the lift and through a fog gate, and he's it's gonna get the axe. Yep. So we're gonna buff the axe and equip that armor for the extra souls. But you will see af right after the boss battle is that this is going to use the dark sign right out. Yeah, so this is a... Well, I'll mention it when I do it, but there is a glitch. Not a glitch necessarily, but clever use of dark sign that you can do on this fight. Which will save us an item usage. Mm. Here so while, this fight, yeah, yeah, while he's waiting for stamina to reach and he uses the witching urns to do a little more damage since it doesn't cost any stamina to use this. And yeah, this fight's pretty consistent on this patch. Yeah, so if we use the dark sign fast enough, uh, the moment the dark sign triggers and that effect applies to your character, it actually drains your souls. So if you do it fast enough, it'll drain the souls before you actually get the souls from the boss, which will let me keep the souls even though I use the dark sign. Why did you drop the firebomb? Uh, for the menuing. Oh, okay. So I can go straight down right, um, right, right. from the dark sign. This also gained another uh, soul. Item which you can use to get even more items. Uh, so sorry. <laughs> After he bought a certain amount of uh, items at the place at the merchant. Yeah, if you spend ten thousand souls at the hag there, she'll give you the silver serpent ring, which gives another twenty percent soul boost. So we're gonna equip that ring. Another item that the hag is very important for is the bright box. They are. A very very powerful item. Uh, every time you use one, you get like a what is it, minute or even longer. Uh, two minutes. Two actually. minutes long. Yeah. Crazy. I don't play this patch, <laughs> but yeah, you for two minutes you do uh, twenty percent more damage and take twenty percent less damage. Yeah, and that's a DLC only item. So old patch, you do not have any bright books. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, this was a boss. Yeah, that's yep. <laughs> that's the pursuer. <laughs> he's yeah. he's free. Yeah, 100% consistent. On old patch, he's actually his AI is a little bit different well, for some it's reason. It's they, they, he doesn't stagger. Yeah, for some it's reason. It's really strange. <laughs> then they made him stagger for some, uh, but he takes a little bit less damage. But it doesn't matter since yeah. <laughs> they just stagger. They so never yeah. not get hit by the ballista. So we're gonna be doing the most important skip of the run here. It's called door skip. Oh, this is the newest skip in Dark Souls 2 current patch. Hopefully we can get out. That's why I grabbed the bonfire, just in case. Here we go. Oh. All right. Easy Nailed every it. time. Easy so every that time. saves about four seconds. <laughs> Big skip. It's harder than it looks, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's like the hardest skip in the run. Okay, so this is the one spot of the entire run that scares me. If this barrel is really unlucky, it'll bounce off the wall and roll all the way. Okay. Easy. Easy. It was fine. Easy nice. <laughs> Why even burring? Sometimes it can go all the way to the left towards that gate, and then you can't even get this wall, this wall open. And I would have to bone back and try again. So we're gonna pick up two large shards here, which will allow us to get uh, a rapier to plus five. And the rapier is gonna be the weapon we use for majority of the run. Yeah, the rapier has very good counter damage, and the bosses in this game have insanely long counter windows, so it combines together to make it really, really strong against a lot of the bosses. Yeah, if you attack a boss right after it attacked, you get, uh, yeah, it's called a counter, and the rapier has 50% increased damage if you attack during a counter window, so it's 
It's real good. And then there's the ring we're gonna be getting soon, the old Leo ring. It increases the counter damage of trusting weapons even further, yeah. and the rapier is a trusting weapon, so it makes it even better. Combined with the bright box, as we already mentioned, it has a really high, insane amount of damage. And then later on, there's another ring that will increase damage even further, but yeah. Later on, that. There's a lot of donations, so whenever yeah, sure, you, you have can, time... Yeah, sure, you can read some. I'm yeah. just going to run to the boss here. Okay, so Elias donates $100 Ooh. saying, Hey, Dist, I'm making my own incentive here. If you die to Covetous Demon, I'll donate another 100 <laughs> One hand, one hand, <laughs> one hand. Damn. <laughs> Thanks, Ella. You can read some more. Okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of time here. So we've got Nixis donating $5 saying, So nice to see a fun group of friends... Friends, doing great speed runs for charity. Keep it up, lads. You, you can keep going until like the bridge. Yeah. Okay. S Root donates twenty, saying, since this refuses to dab, can we at least get him to do Ricardo flick? For <laughs> <us>? <laughs> okay. So, right here is the next boss, uh, Dragon Rider. <laughs> Hardest he's boss. He's he's a very very difficult. Let's see if there's gonna be serious time right here. Yeah. He's actually Nuts. the hardest boss, but this was pretty unlucky for him. <laughs> very, very good execution. Nailed her. So this is actually a new route that I'm running. Um, it was fun like a few months ago, where we actually... It's kind of hard to explain the intricacies, but it's more or less... We used to rest at the bonfire to make the blacksmith appear here, but... By going to Dragon Rider and then backtracking, it actually saves quite a bit of time. Yeah, there's like small things that you wouldn't necessarily think about that will end up saving quite a bit of time when you actually do them. All right, so we're going to be grabbing the bow here. Uh, bow is really useful for this run. There's a few spots where it, you pretty much need the bow, actually, primarily for the DLC. So we're going to buy the mace and the rapier, seven shards and some arrows. Okay. Whenever you got time, let me know. Uh, yeah, just in a bit. Uh, he's going to go to the cats here. Gats sells uh, the cat ring, which uh, reduces fall damage. So you take this is actually pretty much required to finish this run because you have to go down the pits here and if you don't have the cat ring you need insane amount of health uh, but with the cat ring you can do it with this health just yep. barely uh, so I guess we're gonna be dropping down here the pit does not think that's interesting for a while so we can read some donations yeah all right, so Anon189 donated $40, saying, not about to let Dabby lose. <laughs> Unfortunately, Dabby lost, but that was very generous. Thank you, Anon. And then we've got BB Mercy donating $60, saying, dist dab. So, distortion, may I ask, wh what's, the, what's the story here with the dab? Yeah, so everybody wanted me to dab, and I, I said, I'm so against dabbing that I said I would close my Twitch channel if I ever dabbed on stream, on purpose. So yeah, it's not <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> you're you're a man of your word. Not, That's not, why you don't not every hero is wearing a cape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have ten dollars from Pengarino saying, "Dist, seeing this is your first marathon, answer us plebs at home. Who's the coolest person you've met at ESA?" Uh, better say morale. Or morale and Nubist have been pretty great. <laughs> every, everybody's been great, honestly. Who's uh, the coolest out of me and Nubis? Uh, <laughs> don't, don't make me pick. <laughs> You're putting me on the spot here. I know it's me. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we all know it's you, Moral. Uh, but yeah, that's what Scatter. It's some jumps that you do. Yeah, so there's not really skips in this run, per se, but there is a lot of parkour, which is actually one of the reasons I like this game so much. The The jumping in this game is really interesting. Most oh. of the Souls games, you have like a fixed jump distance, but... The jump mechanics in this game are, well, I can't really go into the specific details, but you can get some pretty long jumps compared to the other games, which allows you to do some pretty cool skips. 
So the reason for going to Black Gold show early is uh, the DLC 1 has this uh, really OP ring called Flint's Ring, and um, it increases your damage by 50. Yeah, flat 50. And that is really, really good for a fast attacking weapon, so getting that early is uh, quite important. It's gonna be the first of the great lords. Well, I think they're, not, they're great ones, so I think they're called. Great souls, one. something like that, yeah. And um, let's see what that X we get. In the current patch, any percent run, you kill this guy like four to five times, depending on the route, because that's just faster. So if we do this right, we can cut off his arm here. We yeah, actually might get it. Oh, wow. There nice, that was fast. Cutting off his arm makes him, like, his attacks just don't do anything, really. Because see if we can get the other one. Yeah, you can cut off both his hands, and then he just can't do anything, really. But he can grow them back. Oh, oh. The German, the German puke. puke. Oh, and there we arms. go. There we go. <laughs> well, no arms, no cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rotten. He gets yeah. bullied so much. And yeah, we're coming up to the first DLC entrance. He's just gonna run through the... Well, first light the primal bonfire. You need to light this in uh, current patch all bosses runs since one of the bosses uh, you are required to light all of them to spawn him, basically. But yeah, this is the first DLC. He's just gonna run through here, get some items, and then proceed on his way without doing these bosses yet, since he's pretty weak at this point, and these are DLC bosses, which are way, way tougher than most n uh, normal game bosses. Yeah, we can't kill any bosses in the DLCs. Well, we could, but it would be It would be take very a difficult. long time. Yeah. Uh, but there are also some scary jumps right at the beginning that yeah. can... So we've got one, s one jump coming up here called Sin Jump. It's uh, pretty consistent, but occasionally, occasionally it'll get you. So we need to jump fast enough where there's a dragon that'll fly off here and it'll slow you down. So the way jumping in this game works, you, ha you need to be running at full speed to get a full jump. So if you get slowed down at all, your character will get what we call a baby jump. And let's just hope that doesn't happen. It should, should be fine, though. Right, Easy yeah. every time. Oh, yeah. Easy tap. Oh, not taking the bonfire. No. Not scared. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I miss this jump, I'm not going to die. Yeah, so. this is the Photoshop yep. jump. Easy every yes. time. The reason it's called Photoshop jump because first when someone was like, "Oh, you can do this jump," I was like, "No, dude, it's just Photoshop. You can't do that." Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that missed. missed. It. <laughs> Let go a little bit too early. The way these platforms work, if there's like uh, triggers, like the pillars like that, what you uh, just hit that make them go up and down, and uh, you need to hit well, hit them to get up here. And you do need this bonfire for later on, so this is not a safety bonfire. Yeah, there's a few bonfires we'll grab for safety, but for the most part, they're all required. Sin's back again. He's pissed off that you didn't fall, so he's trying to bomb you with <laughs> some fire breath. Oh, we got the fast doors. Texture quality was set to high. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. These doors move faster if your texture quality is set to high for some reason. Yeah, it actually <laughs> saves like five seconds or more. So one of the reasons we got the bow is that we actually don't use it for hitting any enemies. We mostly use it for remote pressing buttons. Yeah, there's a lot of buttons that need to be shot in this DLC, so... It's nice to be able to trigger this button from further away so yeah. that all the enemies won't be on you while we just wait for the door to spin. Yeah, if you couldn't use a bow on that button, it would be a pretty pretty rough segment. So we're coming up to the Flynn's Ring here, the most OP ring in the game. Yeah, Luckily you can get it super easy. Because RTSR just is not what it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> RTSR will be used a little bit in this run, yeah. but not too much. It's way, way, way worse than it's in Dark Souls 1. Yeah, one of the nice things though is that it triggers at 30% HP yeah. in this game. But it Dark only gives you 20% increase in damage. Yeah. When in Dark Souls 1 it'll give you 50% increase in attack rating, which is usually way more than 50%. There's another really scary part coming up. Uh, yeah, so this is one of the scarier parts of the run. Most of the time it's fine. Hopefully we don't get marathon luck. There's a loud spikes. Yeah. So if I'm unlucky, two ghosts are going to follow me here. Oh. Uh. uh 
well. Mm. It's fine. It's we used a radiant life gem. It should be okay. Hopefully. The, uh, other, the other ghost was kind of just AFK. Looks... So. Yeah, and that guy's going to miss with that yeah. attack, thankfully. No, we're good. That looks good. Nice. This can be really, really scary. We're done with this DLC for now. We'll come yep. back way later. Come back in <laughs> a little bit over an hour. And now we have the flint string, which is really good. Yep, and now we're going to be getting the other really solid ring in the run, which is uh, the old Leo ring. If you have some donations, we'll you know, just run up to the... Yeah, you can uh, read up until we get to the boss here. Okay, sure. So uh, we have $10 from Portable Rodent saying, Loving the run so far. Thinking of going to ESA Summer. Hopefully I can make some friends. I mean, Portable Rodent, I think you would make some friends if you went. So definitely... Morale will be your friend. <laughs> I will be your friend, yes. I'm a nice one. Um, and then we have Beam of Love donating $10 saying, This is for Distortion 3, who certainly didn't use any consumables while Distortion 2 was <laughs> eating Naro. <laughs> One more? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have a Fuzzy Llama uh, donating $50 saying, You shouldn't do it, but you should totally do it. Thank you, a Fuzzy Llama. We are also super close to hitting $16,000. We're $10 away, so... So I'm going to snipe that real quick. Okay. Don't, don't clap yet. We didn't reach it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'm kidding. Of course you didn't clap. Next boss is totally not a ripoff of a certain... Oh, this, is not, this is a homage. Homage. You might know him from yeah. yesterday. But yeah, this is yeah. his... If so you know uh, how to fight bosses in this game, <laughs> a lot of the time you don't actually have to even roll like most of their attacks at all. Yeah. If you just like strafe them in a the right way, you get a lot more damage in and you don't waste stamina rolling, which is very nice. Like right there, you don't need to roll it if you just know how to back uh, sidestep it pro properly. Yeah, this guy's got some really weird AI too. Sometimes you can actually kill him where he, he doesn't attack a single time. He'll just walk backwards. <laughs> and yeah, pretty he, rare though. He dropped the old Leo ring, which is the rapier power up basically. And there's one more boss in this area, and this, this soul boss is going to be required. Yep. There's one little skip we can do here as well. You know, it's actually funny. They fixed this skip on Scholar. I have no idea why. It's it's such a small skip. I don't know what they were thinking. I but mean, they also fixed Moon Jump. Yeah, that's true. That's in, it's in the same spot, too, so that, that must be why. They really don't want you getting over this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if I, I'm going to use the soul here, and I can roll over this on this ledge here onto the railing. And this will prevent me, like, I won't have to wait for the door to open up. So they actually fixed this, and they, they added an invis wall so you can't get onto this elevator on Scholar the First Sin. Thanks. Yep, thanks, from. I and honestly still think they just cope with the elevator from DS1. Alright, we can get a donation or two. Okay, so we have $25 from Save State saying, wow. And then we've got um, Anonymous donating 7.50 saying, happy to see Distortion here. Me too. Me too. Me too. So over here, there's a bell you need to ring that causes the ship to come to the sh uh, pier. And you can ring that bell by shooting it with a bow. Yeah, it's actually funny. It took us like a year or two to figure this out. We used to always just run up top and pull the switch uh, manually with our character, but you can just shoot it with the bell, which saves a ton of time. Also, this dog is in a bad spot. I don't like this. Ah, he uh, missed. Yeah, he missed. I think I got the bell there. I we'll be able to tell at the top here if the blue lights are on in the background. Hopefully they should be. Uh, yep, we yeah. got it. Okay. Oh yeah, like running all the way up to the top takes, I don't know, like 20, 30 seconds almost. Yeah, yeah that's a long time. There's another merchant here that uh, he's going to buy some stuff from. Yeah, he's going to sell a f super useful spell. So this spell was actually added into the route um, a little while ago, but it makes some segments of the run way, way better. Yeah, it's called Yearn, and its uh, effect is similar to an alluring skull. But it's uh, even more effective than they are. Yeah, it affects a wider range of enemies. 
And next boss is uh, Flexile Sentry. Again, not many attacks you need to roll if you know what you're doing. Also, you do a lot of damage at this yeah. point. So this fight should be ooh, pretty quick. Yeah. All right. And that's the boss. <laughs> These are like early game bosses, so they don't have much health, and he does actually have a lot of damage already at this point. Okay, where are we heading next? Is it uh, Copes? Yep. Uh, yep. Oh, and she's sitting down. So if I hit her at the right time, oh, yeah, there nice. we go, got yeah. it. Yeah, if you hit her at the right time there, uh, you can skip the her getting up uh, from the rock before yeah. you can talk to her. Normally, you would have to wait for her to come up, get up, but if you do the hit at the correct timing. And here's uh, he's gonna buy some bright bucks, which we mentioned earlier. Those are used for certain bosses, not all of them, since there's not enough of them that you can get. Uh, but uh, for like the harder bosses and the ones more health, you use a bright buck, and um, that makes the fight a lot faster for all of them and also safer. Yeah, so the old route of this game, we didn't use any spells, but we've switched up the route quite a bit, and now we actually use a ton of... We use miracles, we use sorceries, we use a bunch of different stuff. Even hexes. Yeah. Pretty I'll much use all the classes, except for pyromancies. Pyromancies are just useless. Well, don't just use the Forbidden Sun one-shot, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so alluring skulls, uh, what they do is they attract enemies away to the spot where you throw them. And Yearn does that, but just better. So it basically distracts enemies, so you can get past uh, certain parts easier. Yeah, we'll mention those parts when we get to them. Yeah. There's another M There's a lot of NPCs at the start of the area where you buy stuff from them, and there's another coming up right now. You, he's gonna buy dark weapon and uh, some resins. Yeah, yeah. So you actually can't talk to this guy unless you have enough intelligence and faith. So that's yeah. why I've been leveling it up. That's actually a lot of NPCs in this game have like requirements that you can talk to them. You need to have something, some stats, or have some item or something. Otherwise, they'll just be like, eh, piss off. But yeah, if you don't know what's going on with that, then. Yeah, it's very easy on your first playthrough to just think the NPCs don't want to talk to you, but you actually just need the stat requirements. Uh, get a donation or two. All right, so we have Mob Mentality donating $100, saying, nice. this type, <laughs> yay! And we are also over $16,000 raised. Nice. Thank you so much, everybody. You can get another one. We have Pestor with a $50 donation going. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, Oh, is that it? Ay, ay, ay. Sorry. I did another one. Dang. I don't know the memes. You don't know the weeb memes. Yeah. So, uh, just running through Copes, there's a bridge here that you have to pull a lever for. Uh, and it takes a while for it to lower down. But, like, the enemies don't really bother you unless you mess up a little bit. It should be fine like you have to kill this one guy here who jumps from the ceiling oh that's fine a little bit off there the other guys don't really know where he went so they don't take a while to get in here so you have enough time to actually pull the switch mm. these guys are not liking you very much now okay okay that was kind of scary it's, it's okay fine. the bridge is slow so, so i do want to use a resin there but that's okay we can just can just use it after the bridge. Yeah, it would save a little bit of time since you'd be waiting for the bridge anyway. So you can actually cancel the resin by blocking, which saves like a quarter of a second on each resin use. But you don't really use too many resins throughout the run, so... Pretty insignificant. You can run to the side of that guy, but it's very easy to fall off the ledge. Yeah, if he hits you, you will fall off the ledge because we get staggered uh, off. And next boss coming up, Skeleton Lords. Uh, mm, fantastic boss, boss fight. Yeah. yeah, and you might wonder why I'm using the mace instead of the rapier. So there are different classes of damage in this game. Uh, the mace does strike damage, and the rapier does piercing or like thrust damage. And these guys are extremely weak to strike. So. Yeah, they're skeletons, so they're yep. resistant to pierce, but weak to blunt. And the order you kill the big skeletons is uh, very particular. You don't want to kill the mage guy first, because he spawns uh, 
<laughs> the bone wheel skeletons, and they ones. they are quite annoying to deal with if there's other stuff around. So you leave the staff guy for last, so you can have a piece with the bone wheel skeletons. I'm gonna play that a bit safe. So normally you want to leave like four skeletons alive and kill them as a as the other ones spawn, but it's, it's very risky. Yeah. And, and one of the, this is one of the boss fights that's actually changed nice. in Scholar. So a lot of people probably played oh, through yeah. Scholar, and uh, there's a they changed it so a bunch of skeletons spawn. There's like 30 that spawn during the fight. It's kind of strange. But they reduced the amount of bone wheels. There's only two bone wheels, I think, on I Scholar. I think so, yeah. And you have, there's a lot of these things where you have to wait for something to come down, so that's a good time to use souls and such. Are you gonna try the Covetous? For the hundred dollars from Ella? <laughs> Should I do it? I've got a pretty big estimate. Oh, let's <laughs> go! Do it for the children, this. <laughs> Might wanna take the bone part. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> I really wanna do it. It's only a minute. It's not that bad. <laughs> They're telling you to do it. Uh, I feel so wrong. <laughs> Codus is a hard boss, okay. Yeah. Maybe you can get uh, eaten by him. This <laughs> is uh, actually mm. quite important NPC here. She sells uh, upgrade materials and the inventory change. Like a lot of inventory of the NPCs change after uh, you kill certain bosses and later on he's gonna be able to buy like the higher tier upgrade materials from her uh, after killing uh, like Mirror Knight and Old Iron King and whatever the triggers are. This is uh, actually a skip that's... Yeah, this is the one out of bounds skip in the entire run. It's like very easy to do and it's just... They just d didn't fix it for yep. some reason, not even in color. Yeah, surprisingly, but they fixed the elevator. Yep, so. <laughs> the elevator's really important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm not gonna heal here. Hopefully, hopefully it goes okay. <laughs> uh, this is a hard boss, better watch out. <laughs> I'm okay with dying here. Oh, I was contemplating it, but the speedrunner in me just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Well, it was worth a try. Uh, shoot, I probably shouldn't try to heal here. This might be bad. It's a nice ladder. If you try to just go up to it, uh, you'll just like be unable to grab it since the guy like falls down on you, and you need to be in the perfect center position. Otherwise, uh, the character is completely unable to grab the ladder, and then you'll just stand there and get stabbed. Oh yeah. So one thing you can do, you can use items on ladders here. Uh, bright bugs are about two to three seconds faster if you use them on a ladder. Yeah. The normal animation for them, like you need to kneel down and like do yeah. a weird pose, but for a ladder, you just pop it on your hand. So as you know, you can drain the poison here for the myth of fight, but we don't need to do that as long as the f oh gosh, that's kind of scary. It's okay though, as long as the fight goes well, we should be fine. Hopefully we get the good attacks. <laughs> All right, uh, it's okay. The thing about Mitha is when she's in the poison, she actually regens health, but it's. It's kind of slow, so when you have this much damage, it doesn't really matter. If you were like fighting her with bad weapon or something, yes. it would be a lot harder. And you also would be poisoned the whole time if you. And yeah, it's just a very tricky thing to do first time through. But once you have a 
really powerful weapon like he does. It's not that bad at all. Alright, we can get a donation or two on this elevator. Mm. Okay, so we have Wenger's Big Coat donating $10 saying good luck on the Dark Souls 2 run disc. And then we have Evil World 123 donating $20 saying keep being awesome. See you at ESA Summer, smiley face. <laughs> disc smile. Smart. There's a lot of these long elevators in the game. They're like disguised load screens for consoles because there's no, like, after in area transitions, you just have no load screen. So you just you have a long lift that goes up for a long time or yeah. down and then just uses that as a load screen. This game was PC only. The elevators would probably be like half the length. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, it's a fun door to go through. There's two dudes here, and they will hit you if you just run for the door, so you kind of have to kill them. Yeah. If you're super lucky, you might be able to open it, but this door takes forever to open. Yeah, and like up until this point or so, you're like, don't have eye frames. It's doing another fancy jump now before grabbing the yeah, dull ember. So this is a really nice skip here. And we're going to get this item called the Dull Ember, which will allow us to infuse our weapon later on. Um, that blacksmith that we unlocked earlier towards the start of the run, where we blew up the wall, that's what, where we used the Dull Ember for. Alright, so now we're coming up to Smelter Demon. This is probably most people's hardest boss on their first playthrough, uh, excluding the DLCs, I would say. A lot of people struggle with Smelter. Or Dark Lurker, maybe. Yeah, Dark Lurker is pretty tough, too. So you can strafe every single one of this guy's uh, attacks. That's one of the really nice things about Dark Souls 2 is dodging really isn't required. Or you can dodge by just standing in front of the boss. Uh, okay, that's all right. Should be dead now. Nice. Yep, that was nice. a good fight. Nice fight. So normally this guy has like two phases in total, or in three phases in total. Uh, we were able do the high amount of damage that we can actually Yeah, we skip actually one. skipped the second one there. Yeah, well, after the first set of attacks he did to Smelter, he was, like, doing this roaring animation or whatever, and his, like, chest lit up more in fire. After that, he has, like, an area of effect fire damage around him, and uh, if you get him down to, like, one third health and he has enough time, he will do another buff where he just sticks his uh, sword inside his chest and it lights on fire and does more damage and has more reach. But that was completely escaped since it just died so fast. So yeah, we waited there because that archer can interrupt us on this fog gate, so it's got to wait a little bit. Alright, so now this part can be kind of tricky. I mean, it's it's fine, thankfully, most of the time, but... Just got to time our rolls right. Yep. So one thing that I should mention is there's a stat called ADP. Oh, yeah. uh, this class that I start as has a decent amount of ADP, thankfully. Um, ADP affects how many iframes you get during your roll. So some classes start with barely any ADP, which means... Are you going to do DBGS? <laughs> yeah, so there used to be another all bosses route called DBGS where you started as the Bandit class. And the Bandit class has three ADP. This one has eight. Uh, you get This class has about double the iframes which makes it a lot easier to roll. Yeah, Bandit and Cleric types. have the highest uh, lowest agility in the game, and they have, like, if you increase the agility by one, you get three extra iframes, up from five to eight, which is pretty insane. Now oh, yeah, this is uh, the Balrog. He just chills in the lava. The real danger in this boss fight for many players is the pit right there. If you get hits, you can get knocked into it, and they just die instantly. Yeah, that was actually a really good fight. That yeah. was perfect RNG. That was the second great, uh, great uh, soul boss, and there's the second primal bonfire. And the second DLC is coming up too. Yeah, he's yep. just gonna run through here again and grab some yep. bonfires for later. So this used to be a really scary section of the run. Thankfully, it's a little bit easier now uh, due to just new strat developments and slightly more consistent setups. We've got some cool skips, um, a really big skip that was found by a guy named Pseudo Stripey. So that'll that'll be cool to show off. I'm 
and get a donation or two. All right, so we have Courage2737 donating $20, saying, Reminder to go fast, streamer. Or streamer. <laughs> streamer. 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 Uh, this one's a little bit for... If, if you're sensitive, hold your ears. Oh, um, okay. PJ Rock and Roll donates twenty dollars, saying, "Sorry, Nubist, you're cool, but morale will always be cooler." I, I know. <laughs> she has boobs. How do you compete with that? Good luck, Dist. Enjoy Sweden. I just gotta say, PJ, I'm not cool because of my boobs. Even if Nubist had the biggest boobs in the world, <laughs> I'd still be like infinitely cooler. But uh, is that is that yeah, no. is that how you think of me? <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, I thought we were friends. I, we are friends. You're, you're, I'm, just I'm just not no, cool I'm at okay. all. No. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it no, is. No, no, feel bad. <laughs> you're, you're sick and cool. Oh. Yes. <laughs> all right, so this is a skip that's coming up here. It's Milton's favorite. Yeah, Milton <laughs> loves this one. Uh, he used the alluring skull right there <laughs> to get rid of the enemies so they don't hit him in the back while he's opening the door. Uh, big shout outs to Milton. Yeah, that's how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta respect the Louis. <laughs> Alright, and then so we're gonna have another skip pretty much followed right up after that one. Uh, and this is the one that's found by Pseudo Stripey. So what is the name of this skip? I don't wanna say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not it's probably gonna. better not to. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do some specific lineup here. Hopefully, we get this first try. As long as we plunge attack late enough. Yeah, there we go. Nice. All right. First part done. Okay. Nice. nice. We got it. Nice. You barely have enough health yeah. to survive that full. All right. So we're going to go back and spend these souls. After you kill each of the four primal bosses, the re inventory for Melanchus bright box resets. So you come back here most of the time to get the extra three bright bucks that you can get, but their price also increases every yeah. time, so you have to take that into account. They cost a lot of souls, but you they're really worth it. Every yeah, they soul. really are worth it. Okay, so I should get 16, 19, 19 as long as the soul count is correct here. Nice, 600 souls remaining, right on the spot. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a glitch here, hopefully. Okay, nice. So we can actually attune while we're warping. It's a keyboard-only glitch. Um, yeah, now we've got these three spells. It saves a little bit of time. Otherwise, you would attune and then you would warp, but you can just do it while you're warping instead. Another thing you can do with this uh, is the attune glitch is you put another spell after the loading screen has started on and you get the amount of cats of that spell for the first spell. Okay, so this is one of the spots where Yearn is very useful. So these mages can interrupt you. We've got a really slow lever that we need to pull here, guarded by a big guy with a hammer. And, okay, looks good. Should be fine. Yeah, all right, nice. This is fine. That's good. So normally the mages could interrupt you here, but thankfully, due to urine, we can just bait them out and then we only have to deal with the hammer guy. Those mages are also super edgy. They literally teleport behind you and stab you in the back. Yeah. Sometimes they'll just go invisible when you attack and just teleport behind you. I believe that they also say nothing personal, kid, but <laughs> I'm not sure about them. Alright, we can get a donation here. Sure. We've got $50 from Anonymous saying, this lurk. And here's... Um, okay, so we actually just got invaded by Dark uh, Spirit Quicksword Rachel. So one of the cool things about this game is Homeward Bones can't be used while you're invaded, but you can use this spell called Homeward. So yeah. this actually saves a ton of time. Um, we used to just die on purpose here, but there's a really long fade to black if you die on purpose. So thankfully we can just use Homeward, which saves a ton of time. I feel like that's an oversized planet. Yeah, <laughs> I think <laughs> so. So yeah, he picked up the scepter. You need the scepter to do that. And that scepter. makes... Well, that makes all the... <laughs> All the elevators move in the area, and you can uh, go up and down them to reach uh, other parts. We're gonna do a little jump here, save us some time. And now we're gonna be picking up some upgrade materials and a key. So there is possibility we'll die here, but it's okay. We can afford to die here, because we set up properly for it. Hopefully we don't, though. This guy should miss me by an inch. Oh. 
barely got me. Well, That's here, right. here's the long fade to black. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we tried to avoid on that last uh, that last homeward. The funny thing about homeward too is that it's uh, faster than using a homeward bone. The cast animation is just faster than the homeward bone animation. Yeah, it's about a second faster, I think. Yeah, so that's another reason to get it. It's Do you have time? Um. For one. Sure. Okay, yeah. so we have a hundred dollar donation from Elias, saying, "Am I still the undisputed world record holder for Star Wars arcade racer?" Yeah. <laughs> Afraid so. We haven't had the chance. Yeah. No pod racer here at uh, Winter. Okay, so we're gonna be picking up some upgrade, some more upgrade materials here. We got, we picked up two chunks alongside that key before, and now we're gonna be picking up three chunks in a slab, and these will allow us to get plus ten. So this is actually a new route, and it gets you a max upgrade weapon really early into the run, saves a lot of time and makes the later fights more consistent. Yeah, the DLCs have a lot of upgrade materials in them in general, but some of them are out of the way. But th these happen to be not that far out of the way, and. Getting the plus 10 early is quite helpful, actually. Now the Dull Embers comes into play. This guy won't really talk to you normally unless you have the Dull Ember to give him to him. It just tells you to peace out or whatever. Yeah, he just refuses to talk to you unless you give it to him. So we are upgrading to plus 10 and then we are infusing with Dark. Now the dark infuse, oh, we did forget one spell, so we did want to attune soul appease there, but it's a very minor, very minor time. Yeah, save. it's just at this point, it's yeah. just to very slightly speed up a section where you don't have anything to do and you can cast it to kill enemies through balls to make it like second or two faster. Yeah, maybe. it's just a second. Another boss coming up, the Sentinels. This is a triple boss. So like for a lot of new players, if you just uh, go in here and then start fighting these guys, you get mobbed and probably die very fast since, um, well, there is three of them and dodging all of their attacks is kind of hard. If that. But if you fight the first guy at the top here, the you can kill him without any of the others actually doing anything at all. It's a small platform, so if you don't have a lot of damage like he does, it can be a tricky thing to do. Yeah, we've got a max upgrade weapon with pretty much the best best enchantment we can get, so... Yeah, this, <laughs> this is a lot of damage. <laughs> very, very simple. Not even flex type can... You actually have to wait for the last guy to jump down yeah. because the others die so fast. Oh, that's right. Cancel the no-hit run. <laughs> So, uh, I guess you can rate a donation here? Yeah. Alright, so Distortion3 donates $25 saying, I would have beat that boss faster. <laughs> well, I mean... Well... Impressive. Maybe he should have come here to run this game. <laughs> we have Anonymous with a $30 donation saying, good luck on the run. Thanks. So, there he puts... Um, what are they called? Lockstone? Yeah, I put in a Pharaoh's Lockstone, which uh, you start as one with the Explorer class, thankfully, so we don't have to pick any up. There would be few that you can pick up without losing yeah. too much time. But There's one before Rotten that's really easy to grab. Yeah. So another thing about the Dark Souls 2 is that actually uh, the way PvP is working in this game. So normally, like in Dark Souls 2, one where you could have evaded wow. at every place, you have certain places in Dark Souls 2 where there is PvP only and... This is currently in such an era that wha is one of the reasons why we're doing this offline. Yeah, wharves here will shoot you with their arrows and knock you off the ladder, but we didn't even get shot a single time. Well, you're getting shot now. So yeah. Compensate <laughs> for that. <laughs> you actually had to wait for the whole gate to go all the way up before you can enter the fog gate there. So this is uh, yeah. another throwback to Dark Souls 1, Gargoyles. There's five of them this time, uh. but... They learned from their mistake last time. Yeah, they brought back up. Sadly, <laughs> or sadly for them, it's not really going to help them at all. So we can actually aggro them a little bit earlier by shooting them there, so they 
get off their pedestals a bit faster. Yeah, if they're not woken up yet, they take way reduced damage, so you kind of want to wake them up. I wake up this other guy. Ah, uh, the classic flying attack that you can't punish at all. Yeah. And there we go. That was a pretty good fight. Yep. One more boss in this area. I'm just gonna be a bit of running do before we get there though. Yeah, we can get a few donations here. Alright, so we have Fairy donating ten dollars saying, Damn, I was thinking of going to ESA Winter, but I didn't. Regretting it now when distortion is there. Uh, and uh, sad smiley. It's okay. Uh, you can come to ESA Summer. Maybe distortion would be there. Yeah. This is where you would use Solar Piece if he had uh, got it. But, I mean, it's literally just to kill this one guy here. Yeah, so there's these three enemies, and I can use this AoE spell to kill them through the gate here while I wait. But I'll just kill this enemy. It's no no big deal. They're going to have less souls now. Is that going to affect the routing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they give 300 souls. Missing out on 600, unfortunately. Another gate. It, like, there's so many of these gates. <laughs> yeah. Just wait a little. These are actually quite fast, so it's not too bad. But a lot of levers that uh, require you to pull them. And there's enemies around them. I guess they want you to, like, kill enemies, but... I mean, you don't have to if you just go for it, or if you use Yearn or Alluring Skull or something. I have no idea why this particular lift is so long, because the area down there is not that big that you would think it would require an extra low yeah. zone. It's just a really long lift for no reason. Do you have time for some? Yeah, you can read like two off here. Okay, so we've got Sikinar donating $10 saying, sup? And then we have Larksa donating $20, saying, not memeing for once. <laughs> uh, heart, Dist, and Nubist. Or, well, it's less than three Dist and Nubist. Name a more iconic duo, Dist Smile. <laughs> right, so Lost Sinner, the third primal boss. One more after this, and then you can access the Drangley Castle. There's other ways to get there, but in this run, since you have to kill all the bosses, and no reason to not uh, use this method. Sinner's actually kind of annoying, like she likes to jump back a lot, but again, you, if you know what you're doing, you can Yeah, you not can just avoid all of her attacks. And since he has a lot of damage at this point, it's not that big of a deal. Nice right. thing about the primal bonfires is when you rest at them, they take you straight back to Majula, so you don't have to go like bone back and then warp th from there. Yeah, the routing for this works out really well, because after we uh, after we kill that boss, it actually refreshes the bright bugs over at Melentia, and we need to run directly past her. How convenient! So just buying pretty much the rest of her stuff. Only thing we're gonna buy from her from this point on is just uh, more bright bugs. You have an have a problem with those bright bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a donation or two. We have Anne Vin donating twenty five saying, Great running dist. Hope you are enjoying the marathon. Good fun for a good cause. Are you having fun dist? I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have Debazor or Debazor donating twenty dollars saying, Good luck on the run dist. I'm expecting to see you your Dark Souls two New game plus, seven, all bosses, permadeath, no bonfire, fist <laughs> only, 100% dab on stream run at the next ESA. I think the hardest part about that is the last one. <laughs> so there, if you saw, he looked up at the uh, uh, ceiling and there's a hole in it. And for whatever reason, when you pull the lever, the sky turns green for a second. Yeah, not quite sure why. Uh, there he used the... Uh, branch uh, of Yor or whatever. Yeah, to unpetrify that statue there that was blocking the, uh, the lever. It's just like the only one you actually need in this run, but for yep. Scholar you actually need a bunch more since yeah. they just put <laughs> statues everywhere for some reason. So, Shaded Woods, uh, 
Yep, Not we're much. just running to the next bonfire. Get a donation if you'd like. We have Anonymous with $5 saying, Get good. I think you're good. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't, he's only died once so far, and that was on purpose. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Even the hardest boss in the game, Coda Steven, couldn't get him. <laughs> so now we're running into. Um, they liked doing environmental effects in this game. This area is done all right. I, I don't actually mind this area, but in the later DLC, we'll we'll see the. They do it to an exaggerated effect, which is oh very very tedious. I mean, this place uh, pseudo loves getting lost here. Yeah, I've actually gotten so lost in this area that I've. <laughs> I've ran back to the bonfire that I came from. Um, it is easy to get turned it's around. It's uh, in the old patch, all bosses run, so the all bosses no DLC runs. So you pick up an item here in the middle of the fog, and if you don't know how to run there, straight there, oh gosh. you will get so lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, old patch is a lot harder to find that ring. Thankfully, that one's kind of like on the edge of the map, so as long as you stick to the side, it's not too bad. And we just picked up the Chlorinthy ring. That uh, increases our stamina regeneration by like 20, 30 percent, something like that. It's it's quite a significant amount, and that's going to save us a lot of time on running throughout the run. And also saves time when waiting for bosses. Like I actually they don't probably use that on bosses in <laughs> this run. Yeah, I mean you get attacks out faster because you get your stamina back, so helps with bosses and just running around. Mm. So now we're getting to Najka, pretty. Pretty nice fight. This fight actually used to be a little bit RNG when we had a... Um, so we used to have a plus 7 weapon at this point, but the plus 10 makes this fight super simple. She's just chilling there, you're like, huh, what's going on? <laughs> it's just a lady. But then it's <gasps> a scorpion lady! <laughs> With two tails! What a twist. But yeah, with plus 10, it's kind of kind of fast. If you have a really, uh, really crappy weapon, you can actually stand on her back when she does a specific attack. It's kind of cool. No use in the speed run, unfortunately. But if you're doing a, a challenge run of some sort, it's, it's a pretty cool glitch. It's just clever use of mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if you are allowed to use that in no hit runs. <laughs> Probably not. No hit runs are the new meter. No, pretty pink's doing them. Okay, so this section is kind of scary. It's not too bad. But we're gonna grab this bonfire for safety. There's some mini rats here, which can uh, they apply toxic when they hit you, and toxic is super strong in this game. It's it's like poison, but just three or four times stronger. And if uh. Y it, it'll kill. It'll kill me even with this current health bar in probably six seconds, seven seconds. Yeah, toxic is really strong in this game. So thankfully, if we just stand completely still, they'll miss us with our their attacks. Uh, if you're moving forward, they all, they'll always hit you. But if you just stand still, it's an easy way to avoid it. Ouch. Okay, got slowed down by that guy. I gotta wait a little bit. All right, we can get one donation here before the boss. We have Mediocre with $50. Thank you so much, Mediocre. That's very generous. Uh, and yeah, this boss uh, is another great, uh, great uh, multi-enemy boss. Right. There's just a big rat, and then there's four small rats. For some reason, they just yep. decided that's <laughs> yeah. a good idea. They love the rats in this game. Rats, rats, we are the rats. Rats, rats, we are the rats. Rats, rats, we are the rats. You know what? The bash. This was a mistake. I need solo peas. <laughs> oh yeah, you I didn't have solo peas earlier, and oh. I I'm used to having it at this point. That's all right. It's very important for this fight. There's no way I could do it without solo peas, so I gotta attune that. Yeah, though, actually killing the rats with the, the small rats with the rapier is a pain. Yeah. Morale, can you sing the rat song for us? <laughs> mm, um. Yeah. Uh. Rats, rats, we're the rats. We jump at night, we sleep at night. We're the rats. Right. I'm the biggest rat and I eat all of the food. Thank you, that was beautiful. Oh. Thank you.
All right. <laughs> that was a good fight. Oh. He didn't do anything there. Oh. That was good RNG. Luck, luck, luckily, Red decided not to puke into this phase this time. <laughs> the puke takes so long yeah. to wind up that it's not really a problem at all. Yeah, it's not too much of a threat. I have lost one run to it, though. Just whiffing attacks over and over. This guy is kind of in the way, but if you run into his left side, he moves out of the <laughs> Yeah, the axe that he throws is actually super strong. It, it'll one-shot me, I'm pretty sure, even with my current health. And even if it doesn't one-shot you, it will stagger you for like five days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now we're just running to the hardest boss of the run, so we can get some uh, some donations. Oh, right now? Yep. Yep. Okay, so we have Dist Dad and Dist Mom donating two hundred dollars, <laughs> <laughs> saying, "Wow, <laughs> we're all watching from home. Wishing you the best of luck, Dist Love." <laughs> Very <Thank> cute. You. <laughs> One more. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so we have Spacey with ten dollars saying, "Dist Fro OK underscore hand." Thanks, Spacey. And Cheers. then we have Hulu with $10 saying, ESA has been all about oh my dog, roo roo roo, bark at the haters. How much do we have to donate for this to bark and join the rest of ESA <laughs> in the newly appointed barking tradition? Question God. mark. <laughs> yeah, this. Well, well, name uh, the prize. Name your prize. Name your prize. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at the end of the run. We'll, we'll see. Well, you got to name a prize still. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me let me do this boss fight okay. real quick. Yeah, like he said earlier, this is the hardest boss in the game. There's a bunch of dudes, and uh, for some reason, Solar Piece doesn't hit the crawling guys. It's okay. Just a nice <laughs> nice lock, lock on. <laughs> oh, can we get the triple? Oh baby, a oh, double. We got two. Uh, not a triple. Not too bad. So up next will be Lich Ben's favorite. <laughs> if you have arachnophobia, please um, look away yeah. for like two minutes. This place is full of spiders. Uh. And there's a big spider. So this, what's the price? Uh, <laughs> gosh, <laughs> if I set a price, I know it's going to get <laughs> it's gonna get reached. <laughs> but that's uh, a good thing. Right. It's for the kids, right? If it's a th I'll put $1,000. If, if we can somehow do that, yeah. Oh. Respectable. All right, so chat, you heard him. If uh, if we raise seventeen thousand seven hundred and five in total, this is gonna bark. So this, what kind of dog are you? Are you small, <laughs> big size, big dog? Big I don't dog? think I've ever barked in my entire <laughs> we'll life. We'll find out <laughs> later. It's, it's a surprise. Yeah. Okay, awesome. <laughs> That guy somehow hits you while dying. It's really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of web here. It's like a very subtle thing to make you think that there might be spiders around. All right, so this is a pretty consistent fight for the most part. There is a spider that can kind of troll us a little bit during this, but most of the time he's fine. So Freya has two heads that are the only weak spots and uh, if you do enough damage to one of okay. the heads it will actually fall off and then you have to hit the other one to uh, Freya, finish uh, her off. All right. She's pretty much dead now. Nice. Yep. I've never actually seen her jump away like that. She was kind of scared. Yeah. So you actually have to pick up the great soul here since it's just on the floor for some weird reason. And if you miss it, then you won't be able to go through the... Yeah, all the other bosses, you just get the soul automatically from killing them, but for some reason they decided to put it on the ground for that one. Not not quite sure what they were thinking with that. And there's Vengal's body. Usually he's nice, but sometimes he'll... Oh yeah, it's all Aldia's hold here also. Yeah. This is uh, the reason you need to light the bonfires, the primal ones, so you can talk to him. Okay. Uh, oh, he's being nasty tonight. Kinky. Okay. So, yeah. This is actually... I don't like this. It's a uh, very naughty boy. <laughs> he is. 
It's okay. Right, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah, Aldia just randomly shows up after you light all the bonfires and just like, "Hi, what you doing? I'm uh, give you some give you some lore that makes no sense, but <laughs> there you go." All right, we can get a uh, a donation or two on the way to this boss. All right, so we have Svenner donating ten dollars, saying "dis nip clap," and then we have. Um, Marionette donating five dollars, saying, "Hey, this let Naro fight Burnt Ivory King, please." <laughs> <laughs> Smiley face. So, uh, continuing on the rat team, yeah. here are the mini rats. Yeah, the final rat boss of the run. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The, this boss is kind of weird. First, you have to kill ten of the normal rats, and then the boss rat will spawn. Uh, and with Solar Piece, that's quite easy, actually, since it's just big AoE. Sometimes it just doesn't hit for, like, no reason, but it usually works pretty good. And then just pummel on this guy. Yep, that's the fight. Having a plus 10 weapon makes most of the early game fights pretty easy. It's just the DLCs that can be a bit problematic. Another attunement while warping there. Yeah, there was one more attunement I wanted to do, but I was a bit slow. I could have done the glitch on Solapes there to get two homeward casts, but we'll just have to use some more homeward bones. No big deal. So all since right. he's done all of the primal bosses now, he can go through the Shrine of Winter here. Another way to get through here is... Um, one million souls. Yeah, if you yeah. have one million soul memory in total throughout your playthrough, you can just open this door. Yeah. That's what you actually use in the end of percent, uh, current patch route, where yeah. you kill four to five rottens, you get this amount of souls to yeah, the actually open it. Weird thing is that if you have the one million soul memory, you have to actually open it yourself, yeah. but if you have the primal souls, it opens itself for you. And this is the third DLC, it's just gonna crap a bonfire here and peace out. Yep. Just stopping through here. There's a slight little uh, optimization here where you there comes like a wind blast and like a blizzard thing. If you walk back a little bit, you won't be like slowed down by it. Yeah, it saves a few seconds. Alright, we can get uh, two donations here. All right, so we have a long donation of ten dollars, saying distortion two. You're my heart. You're my soul. I think you're very nice and very cool. If you ran Dark Souls two every day, I would watch as if you're a prey. Even though I'm not actually seeing you as a prey, because I'm not a creep. Far across the sea, you've flown all the way to me. Appreciate you, I do, and I hope you appreciate me too. Let's be friends forever, from Nubist. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nubus. Uh, <laughs> I already see the fan fictions going up. Whoa! <laughs> and then we have Graffiti with the five saying, woof, woof. <laughs> Alright, so we picked up a Divine Blessing there. There's a part in the run later on that... So Divine Blessings cure you of all status ailments. There's a oh cave where we can get petrified, which... Also give you full health, but that's yeah. not really relevant in this case. Yeah, that's not really the reason I need it. So hopefully we won't have to use it, but it's just a bit of a safety item. So this gate coming up here can be a bit tricky sometimes. Um, there's a strat I'm going to use with... That's why I tuned this uh, force spell, which allows me to knock back enemies. So I need... There's these two giant statues that... Uh, they absorb souls from enemies that you kill, and that's how you get the gate open. So I need to kill these enemies close enough to the gate. So one of the enemies is close enough, but the second one, the second one is not. So I need to knock him back, and hopefully the mammoths behind me won't won't troll me. So okay, yeah, the soul went into the statue. All right, it's all good. Sometimes these mammoths now they're moving really slow right now, but occasionally. They just turn into Olympi Olympic sprinters, and they, they'll just fly at you. Oh. I don't really know what causes it, but... Sometimes they're just pissed off. <laughs> it's pretty It's pretty rare, though. You'd be pissed off if you had to stand in the rain all day. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, getting 
be petrified. And the gate Not takes a yeah. while to open, so he's yeah. just popping souls while waiting for that to happen. Another fun fact is that actually uh, they move away as soon as you go a certain way into the back of the area. Normally enemies run after you really, really lo a long time, but they just move backwards. So here's some, some more of the... Yeah, some more doors. The way to open the doors is the same as the first door, but you only need one soul for them, so it needs to be enemy killed nearby, the, near to the door, so it absorbs the soul and uh, gets opens itself. Yeah, so we're going to be killing two of these enemies here. Luckily they die in two shots, thanks to our weapon buff. We used to use the mace on these enemies, but don't need to do that anymore. This is Skrendal. Uh, you need to talk to him in three locations, and after that he's like, oh, maybe you do want to fight this boss. <laughs> and then you can go to the Dark Lurker dungeons, and you need to clear all of three of them and um, light a torch in each of them to access the boss Dark Lurker. And it's, I don't know, weird mini quest, and it's kind of annoying. In the old patch, you can skip it completely because there's a skip in. Uh, one of the dungeons that's there to straight the boss, which is very nice. Yeah, this is like the one, the one section of the run that I I wish kind of didn't exist uh, in this current patch. The the old strats used to be really nice. It, this segment takes probably like 15 minutes to get to the Dark Lurker boss, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. But on old patch, it's just a few. So now we're going to see uh, two of a boss that we fought earlier. They actually have a chance to attack us this time. <laughs> oh yeah, the, yeah. the hardest boss. Yeah. yeah. The first hardest boss that we've faced. That's actually also the first and probably last section where we used the bow to do damage. Yeah, there's a... Uh, yeah. Well, it's not really <laughs> to do damage, just to make him uh, yeah. jump down. Yeah. yeah, this is the only instance where you use the bow against an enemy, pretty much. Uh, yeah, that's tough drag enemy. <laughs> that dragon rider, the gray one, he has like no health for some reason. He's just a, but normally he would just keep sniping you while you're fighting the other guy. It'd be kind of annoying. But if you hit him with anything, he will uh, jump down and come fight you. So we're coming up to. It's a little bit away, but. There's an area coming up called Shrine of Amana, and it's probably one of the <laughs> scariest parts of the run. It's Infamous. the best area. <laughs> it's pretty it much like the one spot yeah. in the run that's just truly RNG. It's if you get unlucky, you're you're gonna die there. Every Dark Souls 2 is one's favorite place. Yeah. There's another giant that you need to give souls to. This makes a lift go up. Yeah, they really liked using this uh, soul absorption mechanic. Yeah, it's a very prominent, uh, prominent in, well, that's not a word, very common in this area. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much just exclusively used in Drang Lake Castle. I don't think it's used anywhere else. Don't think so, yeah. All right, we can get a few donations. All right, so we have Ayaya donating $25 saying, this tea, this happy. <laughs> and then we've got Vestigal7 donating 5 saying, this, don't forget 100 free subs if you die against Fume Knight. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, keep we yeah, oh, you keep going, keep going. Yeah. We have Maliser donating 10 saying, Roo, 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 roo. <laughs> roo, 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 roo. Wait, who did that? Not me. That <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me. <laughs> don't add me. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. You don't have to pay for that one. Next one is not free. Mr. Tengu26 donates 10 saying, Woof, woof, dist. You can just keep keep going yeah, off on the donations. We've really got a long elevator. Okay. Tezuro donates five saying wowie w. Thank you, Tezuro. I should use some souls. We have Chasey Oreo donating five saying roo 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 There's a lot of oh my oh my dog. <laughs> oh we're, we're getting my there. Dog. <laughs> we're oh getting I'm nervous. There. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's still quite a bit to go, so maybe you It's are a long run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's still over an hour of this. Oh hopefully. 
But this lift has no reason to be yeah, this long, unless there's like actually no reason for it to be this long. It's just one room up here. <laughs> yeah, and the whole reason for this lift is just to get one key. Yeah, then yeah, you need this key to get to, to the Mirror Knight. Yeah, it's required for progression. But in Old Patch you don't need this, yeah. which is why Old Patch <laughs> is much better. It is the supreme patch. You can skip so much on uh, on that patch, like yeah. just nothing. You'll see in the any percent run, it's pretty, pretty, pretty different to this. But yeah, Mirror Knight's coming out. Uh, so yeah, this is the one truly consistent. Fi well, there's a few consistent fights. I mean, Dragon Rider's consistent because he always just falls off the ledge. But this is a accident. fight where you can actually manipulate his AI to do the same yeah. thing every time. I'm not sure what causes it. It's some um, damage threshold or something. Yeah, it must, must be something like that. But you got to stand in the right spot here at the start of the fight. So I'm going to run under him. He always opens with a jump attack. And if I buff myself right in the spot where he jumps, he'll do a turnaround. And then he'll try to hit me. And then I can run in, and he's just going to spam his lightning attack. Yeah, you can uh, just sidestep all of these attacks. Yeah. I mean, he does two, like three attacks the whole fight since he has so much damage. But... If uh, you had didn't have so much damage, you could still like keep looping him doing the same thing. Also, another reason why we like the old pitch more is because it makes a nicer sound to this whole thing. Yeah, the the, the lightning sound from the mirror knight and old patch. Oh yeah. For some reason, <laughs> they did not <laughs> balance it to anything else. It's always full volume. It's really really loud. Yeah, the sliders do not affect it at all. Oh, and we are going to be in Amana now. Uh, oh, yep. boy. So, best part of the run here. So, I'm going to be going for a strat called YOLO Amana. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, I can get through. So, there's this fog gate that's guarded by two casters and two melee enemies. And I need to bait them out in a specific way where they won't hit me when I'm trying to go through the fog gate. So, if this was Dark Souls 1, this part would be super easy. You wouldn't really have any problems. But since we have to wait for the iframes to activate on the fog gate, it makes it a lot scarier. So we are going to grab that bonfire just for safety. But hopefully we get this first try. It's, there is a strat I can do um, which makes it a little bit more consistent. So I mean, there's the stealth of mana. You can be snake. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, well, really slow, it, though. Yeah, but who would do want to do this? Where's the action and the thrill in this? So one thing that I haven't really mentioned, I mentioned it once, but I didn't really explain it. There is a thing called baby jumps in this game. So right now I have my jump bound to the stick. So you can either jump with the stick or you can jump with the B button. Now, if you jump with the B button, you have to let go of the button and then press it again to be able to jump. Now, you need to be running at full speed in this game to get a full jump. So pretty much what happens is if you let go of the button, your character slows down for a split second and then you end up getting a baby jump. So some people on their first playthrough tried jumping with B and they probably thought the jumps were just completely busted in this game, but you actually need to jump with the stick to be able to get the, the strong jump. So it's actually useful, surprisingly, to get a baby jump on this particular part. This is the only spot I'm going to do it. And so I'm going to be switching my, my jump button to B, and hopefully we'll get the YOLO a monastery. Also yeah. another great effect about the Toxus 2 is that even when you... You have seen it how far the magic actually goes. It's like... This uh, homing solar arrows yeah. here. Just follow you forever. No, wait for one more. All right, here we go. Let's go. All right, should be good. Yeah. We did it, boys. Nice. That was good. Yeah. When it goes well, it looks pretty smooth, but it can. <laughs> it can, can go real. so wrong, yeah. so fast. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna grab this bonfire. I very rarely die here, but it's going to send me really far back if I Torpedo die. Torpedo so toad. I don't trust <laughs> it. Uh, Do you remember our co-op uh, playthrough? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Demon of Song, so the next boss is... It's actually impossible in co-op for some yeah, reason. It's very <laughs> funky if you play co-op. <laughs> we died to this boss like five, six times or something. <laughs> Yeah, no need for the bonfire. That's okay, though. 
Just a safety precaution. If you get the mages attacking on a bad cycle, it's easy to get triple hit by those casts there. And if you thought that the la lady just now singing the song, he was so wrong. <laughs> Alright, so if I do this fight right, I can one-cycle him. Sometimes I'm a little bit short on damage. I, I don't really know what causes it, but... Oh boy. Well, it's actually kind of easy to hit the lip or whatever, the edge of uh, her face or his face, and uh, that will bounce off and not do any damage, but... If no you aim cycle, but that was okay. If you aim up, your ap attack goes higher up, and then it's, uh, you won't hit the little edge and bounce back. All right, so we've got an elevator coming up. Feel free to read some donations. Okay, so we have Dist L donating ten, saying roo roo roo, <laughs> and then we have Small Doggo donating fifty dollars, saying roo 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 roo. <laughs> We have a lot of roo roo roos, but oh boy. keep, keep <laughs> them coming. Keep going, it's <laughs> okay. So we have Zaz T Rain. <laughs> Thank you, Zaz. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> name. I made the pronounce <laughs> that, but go on. Ten dollars saying, "Oh my dog, I'm Billy ready." <laughs> and then we have Solid Luna donating twenty-five, saying, "Cute speedrunners, dist aya ya clap." When is the dist love plushie? Okay, so we're going to be seeing uh, Albia here for the second time. So we see him three times. Third time he's going to be looking a little bit different, and it's kind of kind of silly looking, but you'll, you'll, you'll see it when, when we get there. There's probably some lore behind it. <laughs> we yeah. don't know I really want to know what the lore is behind it. <laughs> Maybe if you listen to what he said, <laughs> instead of going forward. We don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. So we just have to talk to him and then make him disappear. It doesn't matter what you actually respond to him. He asks you, like, yes, no questions, but you can just say whatever. Yeah, for a while we we thought you needed to respond to him in a specific way, but it, it doesn't matter. Just just spam. Hold. Another merchant here. Well, what do you actually, you buy, like, what? Uh, yeah, so we're going to be buying a, a, an item called Elizabeth Mushroom, which gives us constant health regen. It's uh, super useful. So it's the Elizabeth mushrooms are a little bit different from life gems. Life gems give you regeneration up until you hit max health, whereas Elizabeth mushrooms are just constantly active. They last for about 30 seconds. They give you the same health regen as a life gem. It's just if you uh, if you hit max health, they'll still be active, which is really useful on some segments of the run. Um, and also bought the yeah. counter ring, or was it called the ring? Yeah, it's the, the ring, ring of, of thorns, thorns yeah. which makes it so if I get hit, I do a little bit of counter damage. And like shoots out some spikes. Helps for a few fights. Pretty insignificant overall though. So yeah. this is going to be the second to last use for the bow. This is actually a really nice strat. We used to, we used to have a lot of problems here. So if you shoot an arrow behind that guy, he'll, he'll look towards <laughs> it for whatever reason and you can just run past. Well, uh, he we heard it. He's like, oh, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> we used to have to just stand by the shield guys and then pray that you could get past, and they can, they can just pin you against the wall. Yeah. But yeah. we can get past that consistently now. And next week you have one PvP character coming behind you, so... All right, so this is a pretty consistent part of the run. <laughs> uh, this fog it used to be a huge problem for runners, but thankfully it's become a lot more consistent over time. Very rarely will will you get trolled here, so hopefully There's it goes well. A lot of these guys here, and getting hit in the fog gates is really easy. So, okay, nice. if you bait cool. out the attack properly there, then it'll be fine. So I'm gonna hit him five times here. Wait for one more attack. Otherwise, he's gonna buff at a bad time. Alright, he's pretty much dead now. Yeah. <laughs> pretty consistent fight. If you trigger the buff too early, it can actually get a little bit sketchy. Nice. I go say hi to Vendrick, who's actually a boss, but um, fighting him now would take like 10 minutes or something. Yeah, a lot of people 
always ask, why don't you just fight this boss right afterwards? And he has insane amounts of defense unless you pick up this item called uh, Soul of a Giant. So we're going to be collecting those and then coming back later. Yeah, like there's five of them in total. Every time you pick one up, his defense gets halved. So if you have five of them, uh, you're, he only has one 30 second, like uh, he has 30 second uh, times less, well not less, but if you don't have any of them compared to having five, he has 32 times the defense he normally does. So, yeah, it's it takes. I think there's one guy who tried to kill him with uh, fist only without picking up any of the defense reducers and it took like 10 hours. It's, it takes like so long to actually even aggro him if he doesn't yeah. do that. <laughs> like you just keep punching him, like why is he not yeah, getting he mad? he just keeps running away. Like you have to do a certain amount of damage to him to make him aggro and if, yeah. Yeah, I think it's about like a little bit under 10% of his health. So we picked up the King's Ring which allows us to get through these big gates. There's three of these in total in the game. Yeah, one of them we actually just get to skip, thankfully. There are two skips uh, for these gates. For a long time, we tried to find a way to skip this one. Uh, on the cur on the next run that we're going to be doing, the race between Nubis and I, we there's a way to skip all of them. But uh, on current patch, there is a way to skip two, but not not that one. Uh, if you have a donation, yes. yeah, sure. Okay, so we have Rogue Dark Jedi donating twenty five, saying, "Hey all, first time viewer, long time watcher." Okay. <laughs> Donating to save the children so that they can live better lives. Chat, I gotta recommend this to you. It's great. Also, dabs. <laughs> this donation is in honor of the legendarily fabled Dabstortion 2. <laughs> swagger that needs to grace the presence of our eyeballs. Memes aside, have a great ESA, everyone. Sincerely, do a dab. Smiley face. We've got Ill-Fated 2 donating $10 saying, 10 for your beautiful singing morale. Thank you so much, Ill-Fated. Normally I charge $100, but I couldn't <laughs> resist Nubis. Um, he was asking so nicely. Thank you, morale. No problem. Okay, so this is going to be one of the few uses of the Red Tear Stone Ring. Uh, in the Dark Souls 1 run, you see the RTSR used quite a bit more. Uh, not for the any percent run that Nubis ran the other day, but <laughs> let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna hopefully do this well. It is there is a possibility I'll die here, but we've got a healthy estimate, so that's all right. Yeah, the nice thing here is that these ogres always burst through these doors the same way, so you can always get the RTSR set up the same way. Bam. Yep. So we just get hit by that guy. And got the perfect amount of health. So um, if I stand in the right spot here, hopefully we can get the quick kill. We need him to do a bite attack here. All right, we got it. Nice. Also, hitting his okay. head does uh, more damage, but uh, like, since uh, like you get the first two hits on the head, and that does enough that you can finish him off on the legs. Another long lift. Yeah, <laughs> get some more donations here. Okay, so we have. Hmm, <coughs> Spacey donating five, saying five more dist froze for barking. Oh my dog, WW. <laughs> and then we got Valimore donating 20, saying, I have a little bunny. I can try and teach her how to bark. Do not assure any sur any result. And then we have Normonaut donating $10, saying, Hey, cute chat, show me your favorite dist emotes. Which one is your favorite dist emote? People on the couch. There's no couch here. Well, <laughs> people on the chairs. <laughs> um. Co-commentators. Uh, let me Did let me check there real quick. Uh, it's an easy one. Dist nap. Oh, <laughs> no, that's the wrong answer. I'm sorry. Mine is dist study. Dist study. That's a good one. Let's see here. Um, I mean, dist fat is a classic by now. Yeah. Also, like, uh, it was called Distro. Spacey's favorite. Oh, you said Distro. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said Fro. No, not Fro. Hey, Fro is a good one, too. But <laughs> we right. have McGabe donating $20 saying, Oh, my dog. 
So yeah. that was a little skip there, Dragonary skip. That was like one of the first skips that was found in the entire run. It actually yeah. saves a huge amount of running. It's like 30, 45 second time save. You can die there, don't yeah. <laughs> with, a little, uh, with the help of a baby jump, <laughs> anything can be possible. Oh, and here is Aldia. Yeah. You would think like, hey, wait, he's so big. How is he going to fit in here? <laughs> but, but uh, yeah. They just made him a little baby <laughs> <laughs> for this room. <laughs> This is so weird, no, right? Nobody knows. Yeah, what's the lore behind yeah. him being so small? Uh, can someone call Vati, please? <laughs> oh, yeah, the Dragonary jump was found by Elias. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Ella. You're a real champ. Uh, that's just, just running to the boss. There's like a few. There's a door here that uh, can be kind of sketchy if you. Uh, don't do the right thing. Yeah, there's one little trick I can do here. So a lot of people probably notice this on their first playthrough. This one enemy is just gets a lost very easily. Um, so yes. if I run a specific way here, he'll just run away from me. Yes, yes, and he's yes. going to go check out that staircase, <laughs> see if anything's <laughs> over there. <laughs> and uh, the best designed boss coming up, Ancient Dragon. Oh, yeah. My favorite boss. He has like 20,000 health. Which is a lot for this game, and uh, it just, I don't know, breathes fire and one-shots you. Yep. Thankfully, an another boss we're going to use RTSR for. Actually saves a lot of time here. Oh yeah, the RTSR setup is uh, kind of clever here. Yeah. I don't think this RTSR setup works on old patch though. On old patches, uh, he does a bit more damage for some reason. Um. So we're just gonna wake him up by stabbing his toenails. So we're gonna get hit there, activate RTSR, and so hopefully, if we're lucky here, he will not fly. Yeah, the flying is okay. the worst thing he can so do. So if he puts his foot forward like that, we know he's doing a fire breath, so we can just safely attack. No problem. He's just gonna toast his nuts here, and yeah, like the threat for this fight is basically hug his leg. Yeah. So we're just gonna hug his foot, give him a manicure or is a pedicure. He fly here. Okay, so one he's of flying. Uh, if I was a little bit risky, I did miss one hit there. Otherwise, I could have finished him off. Yeah. But I'm just gonna play it safe. The if I die here, it's actually very, very dangerous. The, when you entered back into this fight, it's a lot different since he's already aggroed. Yeah, you have to go through the fog gate uh, first off, which is very, very scary. And also, since there's a bunch of enemies guarding it, and he can open with some scare, scary attacks. Sorry. Alright, so now we're heading to Giant Lord. And this is one of the areas where you need a. Uh, you need to normally go through the King's Gate. But luckily, we can do a skip here as well. It's, uh, Some more parkour. The weird thing you can get on this ledge if you do a uh, emote like that and then backstep instantly if you don't have too much equip load on. So that's why it took everything like stuff off there. Yeah, it's equip load based for some strange reason. I I don't know how that works really. Yeah, it makes no sense. <laughs> like you point forward and you're like, whoop. Yep. It it, it only works with the gesture too. Somehow that gives you a little bit of extra height. This is actually one of the three bosses you kill in the any percent run. The reason uh, being that you need an item from him to actually spawn a Chandra, who is so the last there's boss. There's one little thing that can happen here, which I really hope doesn't. Oh, so yep. it's called the paper wall, and sometimes he'll hit you through the wall. Okay, oh, he, he just, just attacked. Completely he, missed. He wasn't even a aiming towards me there, so that was good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he'll hit you right through the wall and. There's, it's just unavoidable, and you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to die there if that happens. Yeah, Giant Lord does a lot of damage, but his attacks are really slow. If you know what you're, well, how to tell his attacks apart from each other, there's like no threat here, really. Alright, so we picked up a Soul of the Giant there, too. Uh, we've got one more Soul of the Giant to pick up. Yeah, the Ancient Dragon also dropped one when he was killed. Yeah, yeah so we're going to be collecting three. We've got two right now. So we are going to go back and do a safety level up here. Um, there's a really dangerous part of the run coming up, and <laughs> I can't can't really afford to lose all these souls. So. All 
can get a donation here while I level up. Alright, we have a 648 donation from Silverit going, oh my dog. Also, we have two donations from Rough Dark Jedi. First is $100. Oh, jeez. Okay, here you go. Do a dab dist. And the second one is for $5.03. Apparently, I've now donated 1,337.69 over all year's events. Poggers. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Warped to the wrong bonfire there. Whoops. Oops. Uh, Maral's uh, taking a bathroom break, I think. Okay. So Tsuro's uh, covering for her. <laughs> so now we're going to be killing these three DLC 2 bosses um, to get some extra souls, and then we'll be doing one more final level up. This is uh, when the hard bosses start, basically. Yeah. yeah. So there's a cool little skip we can do here. We land on this uh, statue head. We can just drop down straight to the boss, avoid a really long section. So now we're coming to Fume Knight. This is one of the harder bosses for people casually. Almost everybody has uh, an issue. I think this is actually the boss that m people have died most to in the whole game. Yeah, definitely. For the speed run, he's not too bad if you know what you're doing, but He's he's very aggressive and he does a ton of damage. So, but yeah, you can pretty much just sidestep his attacks. Yeah, you know almost all of his attacks. There's a mechanic here that th those flaming things on the right there that you might have seen. If the boss goes near them, he gets healed up very very fast. But so you in the speed run you have to keep him away from them. You can disable them by putting a smelter wedge in. But he didn't pick them up since he doesn't need them. It just kind of has bad aim if you too close to him. But yeah, this, this is making this look way easier than it is. You actually need to know what you're doing. And even then, like, you can still mess up, of course. Yeah. But it's a pretty good fight. Yeah, for sure. Alright, so now we're also going to go down to Blue Smelter. Great reusage of uh, bosses here. <laughs> There's one boss in like every DLC that you, ch you just wonder what were they thinking. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And this is the one for DLC 2. Yeah, I think initially they were only planning on having two bosses per DLC and they, they realized they should probably add a third and then they just kind of copped out with, a, with an easy boss. I also guess in the beginning they were just kept kept on coping inside just like it wasn't there. Oh, we should change something actually, <laughs> and just put the the color slider to the <laughs> to the left or something. No, just change the hue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the yeah. Blueberry boss. Yeah. Yep. If you remember Smelter Demon from earlier, you might uh, have a familiarity with this guy. First time I didn't even. I thought this was a really different boss, but. <laughs> they. I didn't even recognize him. <laughs> so. They did do. Did change something about it, like the attack. The, the hit timings of the attacks are different. Like he delays them a little more, or mm. just a little faster, or something like that, so. Yeah, it's not just a reskin. Mm. He, he does have some slightly different mechanics. But he also is very bad at hitting you if you <laughs> yeah. are just <laughs> in the right spot. Oh wow, this is a really good start. Also, a change here, when the first smelter buffed, he just didn't have the explosion there. That This guy just explodes randomly when he buffs. So it's like catches you off guard the first time he does it. Pretty good fight. Yeah, it was nice. And one more boss in this DLC left. Yeah, you can read like two donations here. All right, so 
Voldy donates five dollars. Thank you, Voldy. And then we have Anonymous with another five saying exclamation mark why. Why? Uh, why? He, he's here to pick up these bright box in his chest. Yeah, so these are normally skipped in the run, but in case I have any deaths, I'm going to be picking these up. Uh, I guess you have time for some more yeah. here. Just going to be riding some elevators. All right, so we have Axel Sago donating $5, saying, take this five doggo dollars. Sadly, I wasn't able to go to ESA winter, but hopefully I'll go to ESA summer and meet you all there again. Then Ella won't be raining on the pod racing for long this next. <laughs> there are three more tracks, by the way. Ella Hyuk, I really enjoyed your Rats song cover morale. Thanks, man. Uh, shout outs to the amazing Speed Souls community. Cute chat. Ayaya. 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 So, do you, you need the. Uh, what's it called? Ashen Mist to actually enter this place? Uh, I don't know if it's the Ashen Mist. It might be, but you do need to kill Fume Knight to get well, access to right. this boss. It might be just that. I know that much. This is kind of like a memory, like the Giant Lord was in. So, I'm not 100% sure if you'd need to. Yeah, I think you might need them both, actually. But I do need to say that the cleaning work of the floor is... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the boss room, they've got some nice cleaners in there. This place is really annoying to run through. Yeah, so we're going to be using a bright bug beforehand. It lasts for two minutes. It only takes about 60 seconds to get to the boss. So this will make this a little bit safer to run through. In the record route, you're running through here with 19 vigor, which actually makes this part pretty scary. These uh, salamanders here have this triple fireball attack. That they keep spamming at you the whole time. And then there's the alone knights who have insane run speed, and they just catch up to you. And there's archers. It's just a mess. Look at this guy running with his bow. <laughs> what the hell? That was so pretty yeah, that was smooth. Alright, so there's two different things that can happen with this boss fight. Uh, if we kill him without taking any damage, we're going to get a unique uh, death animation, which hopefully we can get. But there's an even better death animation, where if you kill him when he jumps, he will... Well, you'll see what happens if I get it. This guy is very, very strafable. Like he won't be rolling much at all in this, if, if at all, in this whole fight. You don't want to be locked on for a lot of the bosses since that makes strafing easier. You just lock on for the hits and then unlock again. Okay. Sudoku. Yeah, so we got the special death animation. I kind of covered it with the, <laughs> the inventory there. So if you kill him when he jumps back, he'll actually ragdoll and go flying. <laughs> Which is my favorite thing. I think it happened in my record run. Okay, so we're going to go back and uh, do one final level up. And then buy some upgrade materials to upgrade the weapon we picked up in uh, Shrine of Amana. And the Red Iron Twin player. Yeah. It's so, uh, also a very good uh, uh, weapon, and it's for well, like the bosses that the uh, rapier is not that good for. You use the red iron twin blade. So this is why you talk to uh, Clan A earlier to get her to come back to Majula so you can. Uh, buy all those upgrade materials. Yeah, she gets a bunch of upgrade materials after you kill a uh, bell stop. Okay, and now we're going to be heading to uh, Black Gulch. So the, if you remember from the castle, uh, there was Grendel. This is the second time he's going to be talking to him. Or actually, are you... Uh, my uh, after no, the no, giants, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, you first have to kill these giants, they drop a key that you need to open the door to Grendel. Mm, I got a little bit too far ahead of myself here. <laughs> oh. I didn't upgrade my Red Arrington Blade. <laughs> well, you, if you want to read some donations, yeah, I guess feel free to it's a good read time them. now. Alright, so we have Horseman donating $10 saying, Dist, just like Tina Turner said, you're simply the best. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Good luck from France, dude. 
And then we have Fierce Wee with a $25 donation. Going So there is this smaller streamer that I follow called Elias. No idea if you've heard of him. He also does speedruns. And I keep telling him he needs to be more like Dist, a real runner. He does some fake claims that he's taking world records from you, but I don't believe him. Elias, if you're watching, I hope you're taking notes. Also, roo 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 roo. <laughs> so, sounds pretty obscure. Never yeah. heard of him. Who's that guy? Okay, next uh, a new try on this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's do this again. We're ready this time. These hitboxes on these giants are just horrible. Yeah, this section can be kind of sketchy sometimes, but... If you can get the hits on both of them at the same time, since the Red Iron Tomb play just does so much damage, you can just pretty much hit them, not care yeah, about good. getting hits so much. Yeah, Red Iron Tomb Blade is super strong for a few of the bosses. Alright, so now we're going to go talk to Grandal for the second time. He's going to tell you to find him uh, one last time and then he'll reveal his secrets to you. Yeah. Alright, so now we're just going to be running to Vendrick and get a few donations here. All right, so we have Bufu2K donating $30, saying, wasn't there earlier today when Sharice had her Abzu run, but I guess it's never too late to do a donation. At the end, of it's for the kids, so good luck with your run, Distortion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bufu. I can uh, tell you that Abzu run was fantastic. Yeah, I'll have to watch the VOD for that one. Yeah, same. Why weren't you there, Dist? I think I was sleeping. Same. <laughs> We're bad friends. <laughs> it's okay, I, I covered for you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to be going for an RTSR setup here. Uh, this boss is kind of scary with RTSR. Vendrick does a lot of damage. And the RTSR setup here is kind of oh sketchy. Yeah. I kind of just have to get hit by these guys until... Uh, uh, this is, is a bit... Uh, just get hit once more. Yeah, there we there go. go. It's uh, like doing melee on this guy, get not getting hit by him is not that much of an issue, but it can happen. He loves to jump. Yeah, the jumping can, is the worst. Can make the fight very easy or very difficult. So he doesn't like have all the giant souls, so he's doing way reduced damage. So he'd be doing like what 800. Yeah, so 900 there's the damage. jump start. Of course. Luckily, he's not right against the wall quite yet. Okay, so now he's jumping back to the middle. That's that's good. Yeah, like this attack won't actually hit you if you hug his left uh, leg. Like this. It just misses and you can get hits in. But yeah, the jumping. Like if he goes near walls, then yep, I'm so sketchy. He's being kind of nice here. So the best fight is when he just doesn't jump at all. Sometimes he'll just stand right in the middle and just swing away and you can just just kill him no problem. Yeah, see so oh. that's that's what scares me. So okay, that that's good at least. We're just gonna play it safe. Well you're not in any danger of barking yet, but <laughs> There's, There's still, still a lot of yeah. that left. <laughs> <laughs> We've got like over an hour left, I think. Oh gosh. Uh, I hope not because that would be overestimate. Oh, would it? Yeah, we're at 147 yeah. now. Okay, no, not an hour left then. <laughs> Just gonna have to run faster. It runs flying by. Well, yeah. people don't know that Vendrick actually has also a range attack. Oh. Yeah, that's true. It's very rare though. Alright, that was a good fight. All right, so now we're going to be heading to DLC 1. We're going to be picking up a key here real quick, which will allow us access to another great boss in this DLC. It's uh, called the Gank Squad. You'll, you'll see why it's so great. It's the best area and the best boss. Yeah, for sure. They really, really went to the creative ends to <laughs> figure out that boss. <laughs> 
One, one might even call out the fan service. Um, do you know about that? I don't think any of the fans were happy. <laughs> 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 so luckily, homeward allows you to get out of there a little bit easier. With the homeward bone, it's kind of RNG, but you can pretty much always get out of there safely with the, the homeward's cast. And DLCs kind of have like these specific things you need to do to get to the bosses and like pick up specific items. He's already got the items he needs now. He just needs to run through the area and uh, hopefully not get too dinosaur or whatever these things are. Yeah, the the old route for this game, we would run through this area with just base stats, and these dinosaurs can actually be super dangerous. Yeah, the uh, ranged attack they do has insane AoE. Yeah, but with our current HP, we can tank, I think, maybe over three hits from these guys. Oh yeah, they're being super nice. Yeah, no ranged attacks. And we have, he picked up the item earlier that you need to put in here to activate. Uh, yeah, on the first run through, I picked up this dragon stone in the chest before I uh, climbed up that ladder. That opens like the gate to the top per of the pyramid or something. All right, we can get a donation here. All right, so we have Lore Friend donating $10, saying the reason Duke Dear Freya doesn't give you a great soul is because she isn't one of the four old ones. The real fourth old one is a drake that's corpse can be seen hanging from the ceiling in her boss room. That's mm. uh, I thought that was Seath. Because uh, if you kill Duke's Dear Freya in um, New Game Plus, you get the uh, soul of the old pale drake. And that's he true. looks like Seath if you look up on the top, the, like the body of the dragon there looks exactly like Seath and you also that soul gives you crystal soul spear which is associated very much with Seath in the first game ladies and gentlemen he's actually Valti <laughs> so this is the last use of the RTSR we're going to be seeing here it kind of looks like Seath come on so this fight I'm is 100% consistent thankfully with the red iron twin blade there used to be another route uh, the DBGS route shout out to the Lich Bond where <laughs> if you got bad RNG here, you were, you, there was a high chance you'd die, but with Red Iron tw Twin Blade, it's super consistent. Just don't get Wellstart, all. Yeah, this uh, boss can actually summon uh, a Wellstart from earlier to fight with her, but, I mean, it I doesn't come into play in uh, <laughs> speedruns because you just kill him so fast. Or her, sorry. Then you need to wait for the wall to open. Yep. So, so I'm going to rebuff when I hear the wall open there. And now we're going to use RTSR on this boss, which can be a little bit scary. So I'm going to grab a safety bonfire here. There is a chance I could die here. This fight is pretty consistent, but it's execution based. Uh, I need to cut off the dragon's tail here right at the start of the fight. If I miss it, it can go kind of south, but hopefully we'll get the, ca the tail cut. You guys all use the same bright buck for the two bosses here, so yeah, you save one if you uh, get this uh, first try, I guess. There we go. Okay, so we got the tail, now we just need to get the right follow-up here. Nice. Alright, nice, good fight. Alright, so now we are getting to the hardest DLC in the run. DLC 3. So now we've got <laughs> really the make or break for the run. This is this boss is called Ava. So in a casual run, <laughs> you're gonna go and run through the DLC a bunch and pick up this eye, which will turn the boss visible. But we don't have time for that. It's a huge waste of yeah, time for the speed run. Like, like we used to do it. Two, at three minutes? It, or maybe something? even more, like yeah, five, it's I don't know. Crazy. It's, it's yeah. really, really slow. So we're just going to go straight for the bosses, just hope they go well. Um, I'm actually going to turn off the music here so I can hear the bosses' audio cues. So... So yeah, let's just hope this goes well. <laughs> We've got a lot of HP, so it yeah, should, should be okay. Use the Elizabeth Mushroom here to make it you can tank more hits than normally. Yeah, you're pretty much forced to tank hits here. It's Getting a hitless fight on this is pretty much almost never happens. Wow, 
that's okay. Oh, that's good. Oh. <laughs> that attack will kind of like hit you from... Could hit you from the side. I think, okay, that was a really good fight. Yep. So if uh, you paid attention there, when he, uh, the Ava ran away, you could actually see the outline for a little bit there, like a yeah. bit, very faintly. That's like, in certain parts of the fight, it just you can see the outline. Yeah, I think it's, when he does certain animations, like yeah. dust appears on him and makes him visible for a little bit. Now, so the attack they, where the crystals are summoned, like if you stand behind Ava, you, those won't actually hit you, but it, like I was too far away from this to get close enough to not be hit by them that time. Yeah, I almost avoided him. Okay, and then we've got another pretty scary fight. Yeah, this, this is a uh, Burnt Ivory King. So casually, you're, there's these knights. Uh, you'll see them once I run through this staircase up ahead. Uh, they can help you during the fight. There's these three portals in the fight, and... Each knight will actually freeze the portal. Um, these portals constantly spawn enemies. So you'll you'll see the enemies coming out of the portal at the start of the fight. We need to kill nine of them, and then the boss fight will start. And there's right on there. Yeah, so the right. one guy right there will be helping us out. There's four in the DLC total, so you can, you can go and find three of them. Uh, three of them can freeze the portals, and then you'll have one to help you with the boss. But we're, we don't have time to go collect those yeah, knights. Yeah, it takes so long to do that. Yeah, it's 10, 15 minutes to get all of them. So we're just going to go ahead and, you know, let the enemies spawn. The, the enemies will constantly spawn during the boss fight. They, they never stop. You can get just infinite enemies in the boss fight, I'm pretty well, sure. There might be a cap. They do stop uh, while the, the Old Ivory King is actually spawning in himself. Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't actually know if there is a cap, though. I, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's tested that. Do not know. Just ask, like, oh, actually, no. I have played, like, pseudo knows. Yeah. He's done some challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he probably tested it. Okay. So there, the knight's now using his blade, and he's gonna go turn off one of the portals or freeze one of them. Yep. So there's only gonna be two sets of enemies spawning during the fight, thankfully. Yeah, but and still <laughs> can still be kind of scary. What you can actually, what is possible is that to kill Old Iron or uh, Iver King. If you get him to stand next one of the portals while the knight freezes it, he will instantly die. Yeah, it's, I've never had it happen before. And it's, it's also not possible with just one knight because he always freezes before the yeah. guy spawns. So <sighs> this guy still owns me and controller. The pyro guys here, they can like do insane amount of damage. Like their fire snake attack or whatever. <laughs> It can hit you like four times in one second or something and yeah. just like insta kill you. They have two different types of fire attacks here. One which is like a constant stream of fire and then one which is just a, it's like a great combustion, it's just a single blast. Uh, it's called the distortion flame. I've lost quite a few runs to the those guys doing the constant stream of fire and it'll kill you from full to dead in two or three seconds. So if you're stuck in like an animation of some sort, you're just gonna die. And this guy still has own, own swing controller. All right. So for that, set, like while this is happening, there's no new knight spawning, but now they start spawning again. Yeah, so right when he, I think they start spawning like right when he activates. He, sadly, he can't jump off the cliff. Yeah. There. A lot of people tested that. He keeps trying to right now, but it just won't work. <laughs> just keeps doing the jump back. Yeah, this fight can get so sketchy if enough knights get in here. I'm gonna use an extra heal here. These, so I got two uh, melee spawns, which is kind of unlucky. Because they just love to spam attack while you're, you're trying to fight the boss. This is okay. Okay, so he's... This is... Kind of scary, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting really unlucky with these. Uh... Okay. Okay, he's dead. Oof. That was kind of close. <laughs> yeah. 
The enemies would just not back off on me there. Alright, so we're going to be having a lot of running around here, so feel free to read off some donations. Alright, so I donated $20 oh. for that big dog bark. <laughs> um, and uh, hopefully it's also for the chat for promising them to start off the $20 donation train. Not that I think it's going to happen. I don't believe in you, chat. But <laughs> I want to believe in you. so hopefully. I believe in you, chat. Oh. We have CB Ruffle with a $25 donation saying, I made this donation, smiley face. Thanks, Thank CB. Thank you, CB. Um, and then we have a, another $20 donation going, Hey, this are you a weeb or are you a closet weeb like Elias? <laughs> I think the latter. <laughs> it's definitely the latter. So all this where he's going now, if you were to fight Ava normally, you would have to run through here. And then there's a bonfire you can take, but that is past a point where you have to go drop down and you can't get up anymore. So you have to run through here twice anyway. Yeah, by killing Ava, when we, we talked to that lady uh, standing on that little shrine thing, it unfroze all of the DLC. So normally there's a bunch of frozen stuff laying around here. And while stuff is frozen, it prevents progression. So by doing Ava, uh, it allows us to just run through this whole area without wasting really any time backtracking. So here on the right, there's a doorway um, that you need to go through later. That would be where you have to go earlier because this is a blizzard going on. And you need to light four uh, uh, lant uh, torches here. And you can't do that if uh, the blizzard's on because the torch just goes out instantly. And that opening the, uh, lighting these makes the door open. Yeah. And there's... Uh, item here that you need to get to the last boss of the Yeah, the DLC. best best boss of all the DLCs. Well, the best area of best all area. of the DLCs, yeah. for sure. My absolute favorite. There's also great use of Flexile Sentry there. <laughs> yeah, they love to reuse Flexile. And there is a reuse of Covetous. Uh, yeah, but, but he's white. Yeah. Time, so it's <laughs> different. <laughs> They got the white covetous, but we don't get to see him in the speed run, unfortunately. Yeah, he's in the one of the areas where you'd go to get one of the knights. Yeah. All right, we can get one or two donations here. Okay, so we have this smile with a twenty dollar donation saying this smile. Thank you so much, this smile, for joining the twenty dollar donation train. It's very nice of you. And then we have Amir donating twenty dollars saying joining the twenty dollar donation train. Distortion two, which Dark Souls is your favorite? And why is it your favorite? And why is it Dark Souls one? <laughs> I think that's the wrong answer. Definitely not Dark Souls one. <laughs> So we did use Yearn there, actually. It, it, uh, it's really useful for that enemy. That, that enemy near the lever can be, can be a huge pain. So that's one of the great uses for it. It actually saves. We used to have to kill that enemy because he could just troll you so hard. That saves about 10 seconds. And uh, my, my favorite game is Dark Souls 2, definitely. I, uh, Bloodborne's really good casually, but for speedrunning, I, I always like going back to Dark Souls 2. You can also... Slide with a coffin here. Oh it's yeah, this is yeah. amazing. <laughs> coffin sled. Yeah. I, I I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. I would have liked to sit at the meeting when they were like, okay, how do we bring the the <laughs> player to the next area? I know it. We get a coffin sled. <laughs> <laughs> And this area is just fantastic, as you can see. It's uh, yeah. So they really, really went crazy with the environmental effects. You can't, you can barely see, you know, a few, a uh, few feet in front of your character. Sorry for my NA measurements, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty rough. There is moments of clarity in this area. So I'm gonna be summoning this girl named Abyss Fiva. She's gonna hopefully distract some of these these enemies that can chase after me. Yeah, this reindeer that yeah. live in this desolate for. Bidden wasteland of <laughs> despair. 
Who knows where they even come from? From yeah. the sky, I guess. They are really, really annoying, and they just keep coming. Ouch. Yeah, they they have really long uh, hit frames too. And like you want to go through this place as fast as possible, you just keep running, even though like you don't want to kill them. Yeah, you can't kill them. They have three thousand HP oh. plus, something like that. So. And uh, yeah, you just run straight, and then they keep chasing you. And but that's why you summon the NPC, so yeah. they just dis get distracted. I'm going a bit too far to the right. So if you're going for world record, you don't get to summon. You just have to go for it. And uh, if you're unlucky, you'll have four or five reindeer just chasing, chasing on your tail. And they can constantly shoot lightning at you, so you have to, you have to go left and right to strafe the lightnings. And it's really easy to get turned around. But oh. if you're super lucky, you can actually <laughs> run through this area without any reindeers at oh, all. There's one coming yep. now. Another one. I was gonna say, this, where are all the reindeers? <laughs> They're not showing up right now, but. Oh. Pog! Oh. Moreau oh, wants Pog. to say something, I think. Uh. Oh! Oh! We just had $18,000 like <laughs> raised! <laughs> that seems like a big one. Uh, well, that's after the run. Yeah, we'll do it after the run. <laughs> Let me know what I gotta I prepare read. myself. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so we have Chu IV donating five hundred dollars, saying QTT love. Oh, thank you. I think that's uh, just my favorite streamer. Oh really? Um, and then we have uh, quite some people joining the twenty dollar trains. You guys are all awesome. Thank you so much. We've got Aya Ya with twenty saying whoever not joining the twenty dollar donation train will get honked, honk honk. Oh, I honk. Hong Kong. And then we have the Raven with the hundred dollar donation, going even with bad RNG. Your burnt Ivory King fight was better than I've been able to do with four nights. Great <laughs> to see another of your runs, Dist. Okay, so this is the I'm double tiger, two cats. Uh, this time you can see them without having the eye, at least. Yeah, thankfully you can see them. If if you couldn't, this fight would be. Yeah, uh, you would you would have to get the eye if if, you, if that's not, not not the case. But ba th this is basically just Ava, but there's two of them, <laughs> and then they have some weird buff thing that they do, but it doesn't really come into play in speedruns. Ouch! <laughs> Lingering hitbox. So he should buff. Yeah, he's dead now. All right, nice. That was pretty good. So what the buff would do is that it makes their health regen and it makes them take less damage. But since you can just kill them fast enough, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So now we have. Let's see. We've got chariots and uh, then dark lurker. Well, you didn't hmm? kill gang squad yet. Oh yeah, I didn't do gang squad, did I? No. I forgot about them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tried to erase it from my memory. <laughs> Thank you. I don't blame you. <laughs> Luckily, the order doesn't matter too yeah. much, so we yeah. can just go do it after this. I would have legit forgotten, I think, if you weren't here, Nubist. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so used to just looking at my splits and yeah, going yeah, based yeah, off of that. We uh. have a $25 donation from Distortion3 again, Ooh. saying that was pretty fast, but not as fast as me. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Dennis. I <laughs> never forget anything. <laughs> I think that's Milton actually, this is free. <laughs> I have mm. a feeling. Mm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's this guy here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is a super consistent fight, thankfully. This action used to be pretty tough. Um, we, I mean, we've already gone past the part, but using urine on those enemies makes it super consistent. They could interrupt you at the fog gate really easily in the past. And then urine actually lasts longer than an alluring skull, so we can use it on the wall here, and the, that'll keep the skeletons busy until we kill the boss. So yeah, Terry just runs around this uh, loop until you pull this lever that closes the gate yep. and he runs in the gate and takes some damage and then he fights you 
It's actually the horse that fights you, not the guy riding the horse that you would see in the cutscene. But, I mean, there's yeah. no time to watch that. <laughs> he just dies in one combo. Oh. Flynn's strength's pretty good. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. That's frame perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's go do Gank Squad. Oh boy, I'm excited. Do you have a time for a quick one? Yep. Okay, so Evil Kemai donates five dollars saying, please tell the streamer that he looks extremely well rested, smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Evil Kemi. You have some time for a few ones here, yeah. I think, if you Okay. Want. So we have Emerald Aldi, <laughs> well, Emerald Alley donating ten dollars saying, love the speed runs. Thank you, Emerald. And then we have BTR NDL donating twenty dollars for the choo choo train. Thank you so much. Choo choo. And then we have Anonymous with the twenty dollar donation as well, but no comment. That's Thank you the so much. Train is still going. The train is still going indeed. And then we have uh, another twenty dollars from Anonymous uh, without a comment. So thank you for those of you who are joining and donating. You're helping a great cause. Save the Children works in 120 different countries, um, including Sweden, where we are right now, and the US, where the runner, Distortion 2, is from. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank Mur you, everybody. Morale, how does it feel to be the conductor of the train? It feels pretty good. Yeah. It's not going to crash. But, I mean, get, get those 20 in still. That's our fuel. We, we need it. So no, this is another use for Homeward. Uh, whenever you have one of these red invaders, you can uh, thankfully just use Homeward. We used to drop down this elevator shaft in front of me, and then you would bone out, but you'd have to wait for the invader to disappear. So it saves a little bit of time. And this is another great area. It's not as good as Frigid Outskirts, <laughs> but it's up there. Yeah. All the like the special areas of the the one boss in the DLC, like the one boss that just sucks it are just garbage <laughs> yep <laughs> so these statues are the ones that can petrify him if you get hit too much petrification just instantly kills you and curses you for like a lot so he would lose a lot of max health if he were to get petrified and instantly die it's kind of like curse in uh, Dark Souls 1 but I guess didn't happen this time. Yeah, well the scary part is this next section. Oh. Uh, sometimes this statue that's running around here can shoot you right before... Okay, no, we're, we're good. Sometimes he hits you right as those other two shoot and you just get hit by three in a row. Oh, yeah. But we got we got lucky. Oh, boy. Alright. Look. So we're going to pop a shroom here and these guys will drop down in the same spot. If we get really lucky, we can just kind of combo them both out instantly here. This is definitely not Havel, by the way. <laughs> There's a third guy over there. He's the bow dude, but he's kind of confused, I guess. Just doesn't want to fight. We died to the Ring of Thorns. Nice. Okay, we're going to have to run up here and chase this guy down. This guy has uh, way less health than the other two, thankfully. Yeah, he dies real easy. <laughs> Alright, that was pretty good. The fight can get pretty sketchy. Oh, that was really close. <laughs> you can't actually do it too fast, right? Yeah. Yeah, I almost did it too close too fast there. Um alright, and now we just have the Dark Liquor Dungeons, I think. Yeah, I believe so. Someone I'm remember sure chat <laughs> chat will let me know if I'm Does, does someone remember boss that hasn't been killed yet? <laughs> Interesting. Apart from the ones that are going to be killed, which is Dark Looker and then the three throne bosses. I do want to tune Force here. There's a cool little strat we can u do using Force, if it goes well. This dungeon can actually be pretty pretty scary, though. I got a lot of health, so it should be fine. Oops. Oh, got <laughs> <laughs> Just getting ready. Looking good, people. Oh yeah, you haven't kill killed Rotten four times. I think that's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm missing. Yeah, blue smelter's dead. Yeah, it's done. Uh, 
I've read it already. Oh, that's what you said. Okay. <laughs> Can I read one? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so we have Scathely donating 50, the big 50, uh, saying dist as somebody who has played Limbo. Can you recommend it to all impressionable 13-year-old Swedish boys watching as an enjoyable <laughs> and fun experience? Testing your puzzle and platforming ca capabilities in a haunting environment. There's 50 more where this came from, if you do. Limbo is pretty great. I uh, played through that a few months ago. Okay, so hopefully... Oh, yeah, this isn't good. Not hopefully. So we don't want this guy to shoot us while we're pulling this. We should be good now. Okay. So they're standing in a bit of an awkward spot here. Oof. Nope. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We got a lot of help. This guy really doesn't like you right now. Okay, so we're going to stand over here, and they're going to come, come running towards me. And we're just going to send him down in the pit. Got him. Wow, what a bully. <laughs> and there's this one guy down here. He's just chilling. Dies in four hits or something. Yep. It's the first dungeon. Two more to go before the boss. Yeah, you that's actually a good dungeon. You actually have to exit the thing through the hole, otherwise it doesn't kill. Yeah, for whatever reason. So now we're going back to Black Gulch. We can get a donation or two here. All right, so Distortion 4 donates $25. <laughs> How many are there of you? <laughs> <laughs> Saying, hey, Distortion 3, you might think yourself better than Distortion 2, but you are better. But are you better than me? I beat all bosses in sub two hours without taking any damage. <laughs> Damn. Insane. A hit runner. It's impressive. Yeah, a new meta. We have Dark Souls Nowhere with another $20 donation, keeping the $20, uh, $20 train alive, saying hello, everyone. Hey. hey. All right. But we do have a lot of extra bright bugs. I probably should have used one for the last dungeon, but it's fine. This turtle guy is, uh, yeah, is he's a <laughs> real <laughs> champion. <laughs> <laughs> This guy is kind of interesting. Whenever you hit him, he tends to roll away most of the time. Oh, well, maybe oh, not. Not, not this time. Maybe not this time. Maybe the, sec the yeah. second turtle guy loves to do it. This guy sometimes does it. Dr good old drama boy. Okay. Oh, okay. oh boy. <laughs> They're going in. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to play this safe. Got oh, him. Okay. <laughs> doesn't do. Uh, it does a decent amount yeah, of damage. Yeah, but like he's, he has iframes for so long. It's probably not worth it. No, definitely not. A clever use of waterfalls there. If you light your torch too early and run through one of those, then it yeah, it gets actually goes out. <laughs> And yeah, these are the cisterns that have to be lit. Otherwise, killing like you have to light, kill all the enemies and light that thing, and then exit the dungeon. Otherwise, it doesn't count. You have to do it again. Yeah, it's. I don't really understand it, but that's how it works. Turtle boys here. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> yeah, there's the roll spam. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Got stuck on the ledge. Alright, second dungeon done. Just one more to go. Uh, if you can read a few donations. Yeah. Alright, so we have Definitely Not Scathely donating $55 saying, You've done well. He has. <laughs> He's a good boy. And then we have $10 from Anonymous saying, Hi people, thanks for the great event. Always feels good to support the charity. Tell Distortion that it's amazing we can have him in Europe. All of his runs are great. Just kidding. He looks so young and tired re recently. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Insane bully. 
so this is uh, the dungeon coming up is actually the one it's in old patrons you can um, skip uh, straight to the boss from so the tube you never see in those runs you do have to talk to them in every location but apart from that it's uh, only this one yep and this one actually has the least amount of enemies there's only four of them the others had five and six but there's also Havels here again. <laughs> and they just love putting him in places. <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> yeah, they really like Havel. Oh, he's gonna fall now. Yeah, See just up. knock him off the ledge. And if this next part goes well, we'll actually be able to... Uh, Ricard is gonna be showing up as well. Potentially while we light this. And if he's in the right spot, we can just knock him off the ledge. Let's hope so. Looks like he didn't. Yeah, he didn't uh, want to follow us. He heard your plan, so <laughs> <he's> scared. <laughs> it's not a big deal. No. Saves a second or two to push him off the ledge instead. And then this final. final Can hit this guy off in one hit if we do it right. That was not right. <laughs> I think he's gonna die before he falls. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's the dungeons done. Now for the boss fight. The thing is, if you do die, you have to redo one of the dungeons. doesn't matter yeah. which one. Usually, it would be this one because it's the shortest. I'm going to go for RTSR here. Let's go. Well, if he gives me the setup for oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's that's the thing. Darkly is just, just a dude. Oh, he's giving me the setup. Oh. Uh, oh, I've got a little bit too much health. Shoot. Unlucky. Well, I guess you're just doing low health then. <laughs> I'm oh, gonna heal okay. once, just That's cause there, there's no point in having it at yeah. this point. The melee attack he has is kinda garbage. Okay, so this is the thing about Dark Reader. He splits after a certain amount of damage being dealt to him, or he has a chance of doing it after that. And at that point the fight can get really sketchy, but... Oh, <laughs> and he <laughs> just went <laughs> flying <Oops>. somewhere. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> he ragdolls. But yeah, like when he's act when he's actually splitting and you're right next to him and you get like a ton of damage on him if you have the weapon like this yeah. uh, hits in a large arc. It's funny, in my practice run I had 47 bigger. It, I think that one level up actually prevented me from getting RTSR. Unlucky. Hey, look at the soul counts. Yeah, quite a few. Oh. <laughs> Imagine that would be a 69, 69, 69. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we're just gonna run to the throne here, so if you have donations. Yeah, we can read some here. It's gonna be three boss fights in a row after that, so. Okay, so we have Distortion52 <laughs> <laughs> donating $20 saying, Hey everyone, traveled back in time in an attempt to change history. The future is complete chaos, shots fired, and absolute distortion. I've traveled for a long time in time and space, and I think I've finally figured it out. In order for the future to be bright, I need to make this donation in order to keep the $20 donation train alive and tell Distortion 1 that a half-assed bark won't <laughs> keep us all alive. Bark with your heart, I believe in oh you. <laughs> From Distortion 52. Okay, well. Can we have some Frankers also in the chat, please? It's the end soon. That was beautiful. Okay, so three bosses left. They're all one after another. This is the Tron duo. Uh, usually in this, you have so much damage, uh, you just can uh, ignore their damage on you and uh, out DPS them completely. What you do is a uh, mushroom to make sure that you won't die or do die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that was, God was dang it. my fault. So, Watcher has one attack there, which does, it hits you twice, and that's what she just killed me with there. Yeah, just does so much damage, yeah. even through the pride bug. I knew, I was just being super greedy, I just <laughs> wanted to go for it. That's alright. So, yeah, I guess. This um, is fine. Rip just the deathless <laughs> run. I mean, we died once, but no boss deaths up until that. Uh, we were too far ahead of estimate. Yeah, uh, me too. We can have uh, some more donations now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. who would die to the last we only, we only did this so we can read out some more yeah. donations. Yeah. Yeah, go, go ahead, Murat. All right, so we have a 50 big dollar donation from Lark uh, saying just hi. Thank you, Lark. Thanks, Lark. Hey, Lark. 
And then we have Distortion1 with a $5 donation saying, I might not be the fastest, but I will always be the first. Ooh. And then we have Anonymous with a $5 donation saying, can't wait for this upcoming comedy reel. Good luck on the any percent race, noobest and this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um. We have $17 from Square Wave saying, dist H. Thanks, Square. So thankfully we have some extra bright bucks here. Yeah. yeah. Picked up a few extra just in case something like that happened. All right. I just wanted to try again. I wanted to get the Sanso tier fight. So the Sanso tier fight is when you just do four attacks and the bosses both are just dead. It's very, <laughs> very uncommon though. Maybe it'll happen. The thing about this boss is well, if one of them is dead, the other one can revive them, but it's a long animation and uh, it doesn't really happen in speedruns because you have so much damage usually that you can just uh, finish the other one off while he's so doing that's the, the double head attack yeah, right that there. That's so much damage. How much damage it dealt. Why are you not doing Nashandra glitch? <laughs> I don't even remember how to do the Chandra glitch. Uh, yeah, Chandra is a great boss. Uh, in this route, you have so much damage that you just kind of kill her in after like one attack. Yeah. Yep. If you get, get the laser. Laser, laser beam. She's dead. Uh, that's double that stock look as well, foo. And uh, any percent run coming up, you. Know, this this is gonna be way worse. Yeah, this fight's a little bit scarier. <laughs> All right, and then we've got the final boss, which was added in uh, in the DLC. It was a it was added in Scholar, but it was also a free patch that was added to uh, the base game too. Is this uh, he he grew big again after this accident at <laughs> Dragonair uh, Shrine? Okay, nice RNG. This is a great boss, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, I did a bit too much damage there. We're just gonna have to man up here. What the heck? You see that? That did 300 damage. I don't know what's going on in this boss fight. Ever. I've never seen that before. And it's never gone. happened before. Oh, there he is. Now he's it's, dead. It's a tree that can teleport. All right. So. <laughs> That's Dark Souls 2. Yeah. We uh, just got to wait here for a little bit, and then we'll get the credits. You uh, want to press the button for sure. me? Sure. All right. And time on the black screen. Here we go. <laughs> Not too bad. 225. Well, well, you owe, you uh, owe us one, something. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> if I can. Oh god. No, I ruined it. I'm so sorry. That was a really good point. Thank you. <laughs> oh man, I wish I wouldn't have talked. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, Thank you for barking. No problem. This. Thank you for donating for it, guys. <laughs> that was really fun. Time for me to uh, try to do some any percent in a little while. Oh, boy. <laughs> but we're just going to have to get set up for that. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the Dark Souls 2 All Bosses run. We'll be doing an old patch race, uh, Nubis and I, in just a few minutes here. Oh, so. We'll see you in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I have a few donations. Dis, do you still have your headset on? No. Okay. Oh, he can hear me. I'll read this one in the next game, though, because it's a question for him. 